God damn it, the boys are back. Victory and Vices podcast, people, episode 31. It is indeed. Episode 31, we're back. Um, hiatus has been short-lived. We've got a lot to discuss. Um, it's difficult to know where to start, seeing as so much has happened since, um, since we last recorded. Mm-hmm. As many of you will know, the last episode we did, that was the night that Emiliano Salah's plane actually went down. We got news of it the next day. And today um, it's been announced that they found the plane at the bottom of the seabed and they found at least one body in there. So whilst it's not confirmed, um, it seems like bar a minor minute, uh, sorry, bar a minor miracle that, um, that that young man has lost his life. Um, so our condolences to his family, um, to everybody at Cardiff, everybody at Nantes. And um, yeah, it's an incredibly sad situation. It's not really the way we want to start the podcast, no, no. but um, respect uh, should be given and respect is due. Um, so yeah, terribly sad way to start the podcast, but the gang is back. Salah was a January transfer uh, signing for Cardiff. Now we'll go over a few January uh, transfer signings, not all of them, but just the ones we feel are significant, the ones that yeah. stand out. Um, the window is now slammed shut. Your club may or may not have done the business they need. If you're Spurs, it's probably a no because they haven't signed anyone again. Arsenal signed Dennis Suarez. We kind of knew that was coming. Yeah. Decent signing, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah no, I, I think that's a, a pretty decent sign in there, on paper anyway, from what yeah. I've seen. Talented lad, very, mm-hmm. very good football player. Looked a little lightweight um, in the City Arsenal game, as was pointed out by many on Arsenal fan mm-hmm. TV, but no, nothing that a, a summer in the gym couldn't do. Yeah, it's not the best game for him to make his uh, yeah, debut it's a at, tough one, at the same time as well. Very so. tough. Um, other notable sign ins um, mm-hmm. Bournemouth seem to have done very well. Um, Solanke at 19 million might be a little dubious, but again, you know, he'll definitely add quality. Uh, Nathaniel Klein on loan from Liverpool. Yeah. Um, did it surprise you? Um, Given the fact that Liverpool are sh- well, they're very short of defenders, I mean, Gomez now is having surgery, and I think tonight they're playing either Milner or Fabinho at right back. Yeah, I think there was talks of him. Well, he, I said it was talks. He was falling out of favour anyway when everyone was fit. You know, I wonder, you know, they got um, Trent Alexander Arnold. You've got uh, Joe Gomez can also play full back. You've got even you know Moreno's as well. They they have quite a, a good selection when fit of full backs and defenders. I think he was falling out of favour a little bit yeah. and was kind of on his way out the door. Liverpool did tend to have a few more injuries you know, after that sort of talk then, but I think the, the D was, was pretty much on his way then. So Yeah, I mean, it seems a little strange to me in the sense that I would have just kept all personnel till the end of the season. I mean, yeah. what's another five months if you're going for the league? Exactly. That's, that's my opinion. Again, yeah. let us know your opinion, people. Yeah, but uh, like I said, I suppose... Uh, their loss is, uh, is Bournemouth's gain, you know, so that's that's, that's a decent signing for them yeah, alongside it is. And uh, um, Chris Mepham them. as well from Brentford, 12 million, could be an absolute steal. Terrific young mm-hmm. player, great for Welsh football. Him and Rabi Matondo, if I'm saying his name right. Again, apologies, everyone knows my pronunciation now is way off. But um, yeah, I think it's Rabi Matondo. He left um, Man City to go to yeah. Schalke for give or take 10 million. And um, again, terrific for Welsh football. Amazing that a young lad like him would get such a big move I'll be honest with you I'd never heard of him until he moved had you heard anything about him <clears throat> no I'll be honest the The first mention I had of him was when you just brought him up just now no idea not a clue so yeah congratulations to him though terrific move for someone so young um, other notable transfers Peter Crouch to Burnley very smart move yeah um, obviously we had Salah to Cardiff no I don't know what Cardiff are going to do moving forward because Again, they're a team that needs goals and that whole situation is just absolutely horrendous. Um, Chelsea's chance transfer window, Pulisic, won't come till the summer, but Higuain has come and again, do you reckon he's the guy to send him, steer the ship? Um, if he can adapt um, to the Premier League, then I don't see why not because he's a terrific goal scorer and we saw that in the game at the weekend. Yeah. And if you've got someone like Hazard, especially on form, then he will get chances just for the way that, yeah. just for, you know, because of ha- Hazard's ability to create and we know um, Morata was just seemed totally short of confidence, so he wasn't. You know, he, it wasn't for the fact that he didn't get chances. Morata, he had plenty of chances, mm-hmm. and I just think that Higuain, a lot more experience, has scored a lot more goals. He could be the guy to actually put the ball in the net. Going to be an interesting yeah. signing. Uh, Batshuayi gone to Palace again. He'll be a terrific signing for them. Yes, yeah. a very good signing for Palace. Um, Fulham signed Ryan Barbel and Markovic. Um, didn't really need either to be honest you if there was a centre back in there Fulham fans would have been happy there was talk of Gary Cahill you know I tagged you and yeah you did well, yeah I mentioned it and I don't really know what happened with that I just never got over the line I feel like he was the type of 
play that they kind of look, needed. They didn't need Ryan Barber. That's what I know. Fulham just, fans, you can well, disagree if you want, but look, I've, we've just, seen you play. Yeah, you are shit. They just picked up like the Liverpool B team. You know, Babel used to play the Mark, but used to play that. I don't really see much sense in those sign-ins. But Babel's yeah. been okay so far, but it's not what they needed, is it? Well, you know, if they enjoy Championship football, terrific because that's the right where they're place. headed. Yeah, in the mm-hmm. right place. Uh, Leicester, Yuri Tielmans from Monaco on loan, which is a, a big signing. In fairness, uh, Liverpool have gone one 0 up as well, guys. We're just looking here now. Sadio Mane has scored. Yeah. So yeah, Liverpool one 0 up in the uh, the title race there against West Ham. Mm-hmm. Um, having a look, uh, Man City signed Ante Palaversa from Hadrick Split. I don't know who that is to be mm-hmm. honest with you. I've never heard of him. No, so, I've heard of the club, but yeah, so I'm heard of the player. Uh, Newcastle fans rejoice as Miguel <laughs> Almiron signs from Atlanta United for twenty one million pounds. Great week for them, wasn't it? A win over City and they break their transfer record. I don't know what's gone into Mike Ashley spending 21 million. Jesus Christ. But yeah, there's a long are. time coming that. So so hopefully it'll work out, you know. It'd just be a it'd just be typical of it. Uh, they break the transfer record. It's the first time since 2005 and it turns out to be a flop. So I, <laughs> I, I, I hope, hope not. I hope for Newcastle really fans sake it um, that it turns out, you know, I think as well, if, if he does turn out to be a decent signing and then actually starts, you know, to uh, contribute and maybe score goals, create goals. It might be a little bit of incentive to someone like Mike Ashley then say, oh, why don't you actually compete and sort of spend um, the money that other clubs are spending? It's not even that £21 million is that much these days. But To be honest with you, it's not really, it's is not, it, when you think about but, it? But, you know, it might be an example to him that the one occasion in so long that he's splashed a little bit of money and to get a good return on it might be uh, something, you know, that bodes well for the future for them. True that, yeah, yeah. no, very true. Um, last one we'll cover then is Sami Nasri. We mentioned him previously, anyway, yeah. but again, very good signing for West Ham. He's a terrific player when he's not getting um, when, he's not, when, he's, when he's not shagging nurses. Um, oh, West Ham are one all. <laughs> there we go. Antonio has scored. Liverpool Bring fans cancel the parade. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't happening. Jokes, jokes, Liverpool fans. I'm still tipping them, by the way, to win. You won City still? Yeah, still won City. Oh, Jesus. The divide is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> anyway, where do you want to kick off, Broski? Any particular fixture you want to start with? Should we start with Chelsea, Huddersfield? Yeah, I'm going to start there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. Hazard again, showing why he is the main man. Chelsea, enjoy him while you can because he is not going to stick around after the season. I just don't see how he'll do it. Even the abuse Sari gave him while we were off. Do you see the Sari Sar- yeah. comments? That's There's bizarre. That's your best player. Sari has said a lot of things over the last maybe fortnight, I think. That's really surprised me. Um, he mentioned about the Hazard situation, kind of saying that if he wants to go, he can go. Now That's I, just weird. Now, I, I know that you know, in many cases, you, you know, you'll always kind of say behind the scenes to the player, you know, we really want you to stay and say all the right things. But, you know, if, if you really want to leave, you would say that behind the scenes. But to come out publicly and just say, you know, we like him, but if he wants to go, then then he can he can walk away. It was a bit bizarre to me. But um, his performance this weekend, well, just I was watching it and and you're going to like this, right? But, you know, I know how much you you love. I fucking Eden love Hazard. Hazard as a new as a neutral from a neutral perspective, because I'm not a Chelsea fan. But I'm a Hazard fan, yeah. and I don't understand why people don't like him. His touch, his technique, his pace, his low center of gravity. I would pay money all day to watch yeah. that guy play. And you know, as you know, I have I've never totally disagreed with you. I just kind of demanded a little bit more from him. Although at times. my critics have disagreed with me, you all know mm. who you are as well. <laughs> Bastards. Well, I was watching him in the in the game this weekend, and, and yes, it's only Huddersfield, okay. Um, and you know, a home game against the bottom of the league by some distance, you you do expect to stick a few goals past them, obviously. But I was just watching him throughout the game, and like you said, they are going to miss everything about him because every single good thing that comes from a Chelsea goes attack through goes through Eden Hazard. Correct. And he creates things just completely other than nothing, like the top players do. He will just turn on a sixpence, and his his feet are so quick and. He just stopped one minute, and all of a sudden, in two seconds, he's gone. He's six yards down the line, and he's 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 gone past the full back, or he's gone, you know, he's cut inside the centre half. And I just don't see if if he goes. I say if when he will go. Yeah, 100%. he eventually has to go, doesn't he? Yeah. When he goes, I think then people will start to fully appreciate how good he was for them. It's going to be interesting at Chelsea because they're going to have to have some type of overhaul. I mean, Pedro, I'm assuming Pedro is at least 30 plus now, is he? Give or take. He must be at least 30. Yes, he has got William is at least 30. Hazard now will want to go. Um, Pulisic will come in. Hudson-Odoi doesn't want to be there. 
Um, again, Hudson Adoy never actually made it out. That's another transfer. Never made it to um, to Germany, which again I find bizarre that Chelsea just wouldn't. I don't. I don't know why. It's like pissing into the wind, yeah. isn't it? You're like saying, right, we want you to stay, but by the way, you're not going to play. Um, just take the forty mil. Just, just take it. I don't understand the issue. Just being so stubborn and selfish about it. You know, the, as soon as the talk came out about Hudson Adoy and the interest from Bayern Munich, all of a sudden they started to give him game time, um, and then. I think he started to realise that there was nothing big going to come of him at nothing Chelsea. Gonna be, so nothing he puts in his transfer it. request, um, and they just they just outright decline it, just out of nothing other than just selfishness, I believe, yeah. because he's not going to make a career at Chelsea. There, there is not no at way. all. No, absolutely and I'm, not. I'm, totally I'm, right. And I'm not being, I'm not insulting or or just trying to take you know take the mick out of out of Chelsea as a club or or how they do things, but the evidence tells you that they don't promote youth. There's yeah. there's not one. You know, player that's come from their youth system that's gone on to do big things at Chelsea. Yeah, um, historically, they, historically they don't do it, do they? It's just it's they not, not something they do. But and I'm trying to get up the um, the list, but it was on um, I think it was on Talksport the other day. Um, uh, here it is now. Um, Chelsea astonishingly have 42 players out on loan. Jesus Christ! Moment. Um, and the list will be about you somewhere. Um, but you look at some of the players. Yes, you know some of them are maybe a couple you haven't heard of and. And maybe some that are not all that good. But I'm going to go through a list and, and just give you a couple of players here, right? So, yeah, most definitely. So you've got Tammy Abraham. Yeah. Okay, so everywhere he's gone, he's pretty much scored goals. Now I'm not saying that you know Chelsea should just bring him back in and and, and play him all the time, but you know they had a, they've you hope they've solved that situation with Higuain now. He's another one. Why he hasn't asked to just leave yet? I don't yeah. know. I can only assume it's money. Yeah. So you got Abraham, you got uh, Bakayoko. Yeah, yeah, Bakayoko, him. yeah. He was supposed to be the next big thing out on London AC Milan. Lewis Baker at Red, and you got Batshuayi is now at uh, Crystal Palace. Um, Isaiah Brown, uh, Trevor Shalaba. You've got Jada Silva at Bristol City. He's doing very well. Jada Silva, by the way. I yeah. didn't know this, actually, but you know Jada Silva? He has a twin brother. Jada Silva played for Bristol City against Swansea on the weekend. Played very well, might I add. Mm-hmm. Um, Jada Silva has a brother called Cole De Silva, who is actually a fullback for Wales. Really? Jada Silva can qualify for Wales. So if he's watching, Jada Silva, don't bother with England. Come to the Welsh side. Yeah. Come to the red side, Jay. Indeed. Um, we then go to Kennedy at Newcastle. Yeah. Thomas Callas. Killian Hazard as well. Yeah. Rhys James. They like the Hazard brothers, they don't do, they? They do, yeah. Uh, then you've got Morata, just gone to Atletico Madrid. Victor Moses. Mason Mount. Mason Mount's terrific for um, Casey well. Palmer for Bristol City. Another one doing well. Um, Christian Pulisic. Quintero. Baba Rahman. Remember the full that they signed? Baba. I think, I think if my Arabic is right, it's Baba Rahman. <laughs> it probably is, yeah. It's Baba Rach. <laughs> you got to say that Rach. <laughs> And lastly, Kurt Zuma. Kurt Zuma, yes. Oh, and Charlie Masonda, does he still play for Chelsea or have they missed him out? Because the Masonda brothers, there was about four. Yeah, no, he's there. Yeah, he's oh, there. He is on there. Where is he? Yeah. But no, by the way. Uh, Vitesse, obviously. Oh, yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah. They've got. The Dutch League, yeah. Just doing it. They've got, I think it's seven or eight players at Vitesse. Um, but yeah, ju- you know, just to list off quite a few names there. That's and, a fucking and, huge wage and, bill. And quite a lot of talented names as well. That's mad. That's just stockpiling players. Yeah. That's all that is. Thomas, oh, oh sorry, I thought you said Thomas. Yeah, Thomas Callas is still playing for Chelsea. He's still under, under the Chelsea bus. Jesus yeah. Christ, oh, my. Yeah. Those contracts they give must be so good, man. No, for young players, because they, they will not go. They're like, I ain't taking a pay cut. Yeah. No, no way. So it's it, it's an interesting, I say it's, a, it's an interesting situation at Chelsea. It's it's something that we've known for a while, but you know, their, their lack of youth products and how many players they have on loan but that list just seems to keep growing I saw an article from last year where it was 29 players it's now 42 what's it going to be next year you know so um, I think it start their own league couldn't they like they, they could, they could start they, they honestly league. could but so you're just going back to the game on the weekend um, as I touched upon yes you know you'd expect three points there um, and you'd probably expect a few goals with it but after an embarrassing defeat in the week to Bournemouth oh yeah they got tumped spanked they were over. rinsed. Yeah. And it, it wasn't even like, you know, the score, they didn't reflect the game and Chelsea had maybe two or three chances of their oh own. It ju- they just got completely dicked on. Battered. Totally. And I, I think I read somewhere as well Shameful. that they hadn't lost a game by four goals since like 1996 or 1997. So it's not, it's not just the fact it's embarrassing to lose to a club like Bournemouth, it's the manner that they did it in. And that's yeah. no disrespect to Bournemouth. No, no, no at all. They actually played very well in that. They, they, they played some brilliant football. David Brooks was excellent. Josh oh, King was excellent. Brooks is some um, talent, by the way. What a player. Yeah. And, you know, and we've said in, in previous episodes with Bournemouth that when they play, they can play. Yeah, it and depends they, what Bournemouth you get. Yeah. And at home, when you've got Josh King, 
Um, you've got even Junior Stannis last, David Brooks, um, Ryan Fraser's in the mix, you've got Callum Wilson mm-hmm. in there as well. That's a really good mix of yeah. talented attacking players. So um, it was really important after that, um, you know, really bad result that, that they did get a, um, a good response and I think they did just that. So yeah. it's good for, um, you know, Higuain to get on the score sheet. I think the second one did take a, a little deflection, but, you know, it was a good strike nonetheless. It was a very good strike, yeah. Um, so I think they've got a few... Um, de- Tough games coming up now, uh, Chelsea. They've got City Chelsea next. Chelsea have they? City twice. And they've got United in the Cup. they got United in the Cup. They have... The Europa League against, Malmo, against Malmo. Malmo yeah. home and away. So, yeah, they got City, Malmo home and away. United in the Cup. they got City again. Um, that's We're going to see what this Chelsea team is made yeah, of I think now. they've got Spurs at the bridge uh, they as well. Do, yeah, they do, yeah. They have that. Spurs, yeah. They, we'll really see what they're made of because the Huddersfield game didn't really tell me anything that I didn't know no. in a sense that, yeah, okay, you can beat a side that's at the bottom of the division um, at home. But when you go away to a Bournemouth, a really tough place on a cold mm-hmm. night, that's where you learn. No, that's, that's where true. You, that's where you learn. And and we learned an awful lot about that Chelsea side that maybe they don't have it in them. Maybe they will down tools like they have done for previous managers. Mourinho, yeah. Conte, a lot of those players have form. As you know, I mentioned uh, maybe just a couple of episodes back that if Sarri hadn't have won that uh, semi-final cup tie against uh, Spurs, I think he could have gone on to be sacked. Now, I'm still kind of of that opinion, depending on how the rest of the season goes. Now, he's not saying very good things. Now, he's quite recently come out as well and said that, again, he, he still struggles to motivate the players. He's come out and said it was going to be harder than what he expected. Um, he's, you know, when he was asked about the whole can't they Georgina situation about changing it, he just outright stubbornly said no. It's going to be my way. Can't they hasn't done bad there, but I mean, realistically, no Chelsea's fortunes would probably change if you just just swap. Can't they though? He's he's that good of a player that he will just give you, you know, everything, and and, and he will do things for you regardless of where you, with, you know, to a certain extent of where you put him. Very and, true. You know, and this weekend he provided two assists in the same match for the first time in his career. I mean, the guy just keeps so, going, didn't he? So, you know, you, you play him as a whole midfield player, as a, a midfield player that's a little bit further forward. He is just going to do bits. But as we all know, and you know, it's getting to the point where I know it, you know it, Reese knows it, you know, the fans of most clubs know it, most pundits and commentators are all saying it, that he's being played out of position. 100%. And Sari is the only one at the moment that just doesn't want to admit that. Now, I think it's just outright stubbornness. I think even he can see it. He's playing this 4 3 3. That I just don't think is working either. So, you know, if if results don't go their way, because they could easily lose to City, yeah, and you know they could easily get knocked out of the cup to United, um, and then they could you know they have City again, and then they've got they could Spurs. potentially win uh, out of the big. I don't classify Malmo as a big game, but they could potentially win zero of those games. Yeah, you, you know, you, you take you, the Europa League out of the equation, and you just uh, go FA Cup, and you know the Premier League, they could find themselves out of the FA Cup. And up to the top four within the next month. Yeah, they could. And I think it gets to that point now. We get to maybe end of February time, where I think Abramovich is going to be really looking at that. Oh, he will. Roman is never too far away, let me tell you. He may be on a yacht in the middle of the med somewhere, but that guy, he sees fucking everything Mm -hmm. that guy does. Um, Weird stature that I found strange, um, and maybe it's just me, but I I thought it might have been a a bigger number. Um, Higuain, when he played under Sarri at Napoli in 2015-2016 season, equaled the Serie A goal-scoring record with 36 goals in a season. Now, for some reason, I just thought that would have been a higher number, but then I suppose... They haven't had a ton of quality in Serie A over the past few years. No, that is very true. Um, you know, you and again, not to disrespect Italian football, they have wonderful players over the years. But you look back at players like you know Batistuta and uh, and Crespo and all these other players, Shevchenko, and Shevchenko, and I'm looking yeah. and thinking the the record's 36. And maybe it's because we've been spoiled with Ronaldo and Messi. They've absolutely blessed us and they've um, they've just scored goals upon goals upon goals. And they probably you'd look at Ronaldo, he's on what, seventy <coughs> goals now? Yeah. He might he, he might break that. It probably probably wouldn't in fairness. So maybe a younger Cristiano Ronaldo would have, but yeah, yeah, just a stat that I found quite strange. Yeah, no, I mean he could Ronaldo could go on to do Ronaldo things and you know, he had a brace this weekend, which I'll come to that later, mm-hmm. as the European roundup is is back. Um, but he had a brace this weekend, and you know 
he could easily have back to back hat tricks, you know, and followed by a brace and another hat trick. It's, it's not beyond him. So, yeah. um, you know, you know I, I'm, I'm assuming he might push that quite close. But yeah, no, no, I understand where you're coming from with that one. Um, Huddersfield on 11 points. They are 13 points of Burnley, who are yeah. just above the relegation zone. Um, are we calling this now? Are they down? I think you have to. Yeah. I there's there's nothing coming from Huddersfield. Yes, they you know we've we've said it. They've played Chelsea this weekend away at the Bridge. It's not really a game that you're going to expect a massive overhaul or, or response from your side. But they've changed the manager. Nothing else has changed for me. They don't look like a no, side not, not, that's going to turn anything on its head. You know, we again, I, do, I know I don't want to um, go on it too, you know, go over it too much because Huddersfield fans are probably sick of us now. But the reality is, is that there's just no quality on that side. Nothing. Yeah, no, true that. All right, cool. We'll draw a line under Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Decent win, but they were exposed uh, a few days beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll go nicely into Tottenham and Newcastle. Now, I thought Newcastle, after the Man City game, might have sneaked a point, and they um, they almost did. But yeah. the fact that the most underrated player in football right now, Son, came up trumps again. This guy is a fucking brilliant player. Like, I keep saying it every single week. This guy, his energy levels, you know when you see him play from the first minute to the 91st minute, he has just got the same desire and yeah. appetite for the game. I just think he's fucking brilliant. The best thing that happened to Spurs was South Korea getting knocked out in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Because... That saved their season because it looked like the wheels yeah. were about to come off. You know, you had the Fulham game where they just about got through. Um, they played, was it Watford? Um, before came back, yeah. Two late came goals. back, just got through... And, you know, they were out then at both cups. You were thinking, oh, which way is this going to go? And then Sun steps up, saves the day. Yeah. Boom. The one thing I will say about that is, yes, he was impressive, as he always is, and especially this season, Son. And I I think, you know, he will be one of the contenders for a PFA Player of the Year. He has to be in there, yeah. Um, Absolutely has to be. I think he scored 10 goals, maybe more this season. And, you know, he's single-handedly pulling Spurs out of the shit right now. Um, But, you know, on the other hand as well, um, the shot that he had for the goal, um, drew a really rare howler from Martin Dubravka. It just went right into the Yeah, do you know, sometimes you kind of earn your luck. And I just felt with all the hard running he put in, he yeah. maybe kind of deserved it. And, that. you know, Dubravka, he's been, you know, really consistent for he Newcastle. He has, he's been very solid, um, actually, for Newcastle. He's been, Newcastle a, he's been a great sign in, which they haven't had many of those, you know. But um, mm. he's been a real good, um, you know, addition for them. And he's, I don't want to say like he's earned himself a bad mistake. But he, he's one. done so much good that yeah, yeah. you can't really say too much. But you know that game, you know, he could potentially finish nil nil. Um, you know, had he not made that that error because you know it was it looked like it would be a pretty routine save for him. Um, but you know, Newcastle had a couple of chances as well. Rondon at the post. He did, yeah. Rondon always looks lively. We've you know we've said if they Rondon's can keep Rondon tank, fit, um, then they've got every chance of, of staying up. But yeah, I did think Newcastle were a little bit unlucky. Um, but I think Newcastle fans will see a little bit. You know, it looks a little bit more promising. They broke the transfer record. They had an unexpected win against City, and they looked okay against Spurs. You know, they were away, and I thought they looked better than they than they have done in previous weeks. Yeah. So, um, there may, may be a slight air of positivity on the club. Yes, you know, the Man Nothing City too win, much. the performance at Spurs, the the transfer record being broken. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot to be positive about Newcastle right now in 15th on 24 points. Uh, there are three teams on 24 points, Southampton, Burnley, Newcastle, followed by Palace on 26, Brighton on 27. So there's no reason why Newcastle with two wins couldn't be very comfortable because mm-hmm. there's no way Cardiff, Fulham or Huddersfield are going to string together any runs. So no. I hope Newcastle are safe. Well, like I've said before, yeah. I like Newcastle as a club. I'd like them to stay up. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree with that as well. And I'd probably just run a, you know, just a couple of stats um, yeah, from, from, from the weekend as well. I've brought this um, this stat before, interestingly, but it, it's still going. Um, and it's, Spurs have now gone 29 games without a draw in the Premier League. Just you know I've said now. this yeah, before. Yeah, Spurs just don't do draws. Not they at the moment, no. do or die with Spurs. So that's a new record as well. So that record was previously held by uh, by Bolton Wanderers, who went uh, 28 games without a draw back in uh, 2011. Really? So, you know, it's not, it's not one of those groundbreaking stats, but, you know, you, you just... There's always draws, yeah, yeah. you know. There, there, there are always draws, but Spurs just just don't seem to be interested in. Uh, the people now who they just go harder, go, go on their rackers, right? Every week, going, oh, Spurs might get a draw. You who don't know that stat, just don't put it down. <coughs> There's no point. But there is no the law of averages point. says that this will come to an end at some point. It, it'll have to at some point, but who knows? It might not be any. Yeah, but if you uh, if you, you know, for you guys that are like a, like a bet, 
um, you know if Spurs are on there and you're looking at it I wouldn't go for a draw I at absolutely the moment. wouldn't go absolutely for a draw not. I would definitely go for Sun to score as well yeah. by the way um, uh, just a quick quick question for you right mm-hmm. do you reckon Spurs are in a title race do you know I've got the same question written down I am um, it's I mean look if Liverpool draw tonight Liverpool go on to 60 is it 61 or 62 points 62 they'll... 62 points and Spurs are on 57 Man City are on 56 with uh, you know they've got a game in hand but it's not it's not it's so, not completely out of the question that Spurs yeah. could be up there. No. Alex Kirkhouse asked a question a few weeks ago. I'm sure you'll he remember. Did. Shout out to Kirk, where yeah. he said, you know, could Spurs or something along the lines of could Spurs be out of the title race after I think it was after January or something, um, due to the fixtures that they had or something along those lines. And you know, we, we pretty much we all but wrote off Spurs' is chances as title contenders. I know and we you know, we we put it down as reasons such as Spurs are Spurs, you know. They, you know, they tend to bottle it's a Spursy it. Spursy thing, yeah. They'll do it. They'll be a Spursy thing. But um, against all odds, it didn't look like it was going to be the case. They've had a few ropey results, but they've got they've got the wins lately. And they have. Whether you like it or not, Spurs fan or not, they're still there. They're still hanging and, in and there. They're still mind. lingering around. They are so still hanging in there. You know, you, you look at it. If if Liverpool draw tonight, the sixty two points. It's only five points um, that Spurs are behind. Mm. Now, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go. I know, I'm about to put a bet on Spurs to win the league. I'm certainly not going to do that. But you know, mathematically, they're more than close enough so that you kind of have to say that it's a three-horse race at the moment. It do would you know, be an insult I, to Spurs. I, yeah, I was going to say I don't want to insult Spurs like that. I I didn't think they do it, but if Spurs can be in, I say if you get to mid March and Spurs are still hovering around there, and they can get Ali back fit, they can get Kane back fit. Yeah. They got a chance, bro. Yeah, and, and the thing is as well, there's, there's still a lot to be said in some of the big games and the Champions League as well. So there you is. Know, you look at City and Liverpool could get further than Spurs. They're playing extra games. You got City playing the League Cup final. You yeah. got the FA Cup can you know can be a major part in that. So it's it's absolutely far from over, and you, and you and you can't you know write off Spurs. Everyone speaks about Liverpool and City, and you know rightly so. But um, a lot of things can change. So. You know, five points is only five points, and it only takes you know Liverpool and City to lose one game each, and they are hot on their heels, seriously hot on their heels. Yeah. So and yeah, it's actually Liverpool six as it stands because Liverpool are drawing right now. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool sixty two points, Man City fifty nine points, Spurs fifty seven points. Yeah. So it it is going to develop potentially into a three horse race, and I, I think it's great for the Premier League. I don't think they'll do it, but. They're asking the question, and that's you know all what? you can do. Stranger things have happened, yeah. yeah. Stranger things have happened. So, yeah, Spurs potentially in the title race. Big players to come back. Spurs fans, let us know what you think. You happy with that, how everything's gone so far? I know they're out of two cups, but, I mean, you know, can you have it all? Probably not in most cases, can you? So, um, mm-hmm. considering, you know, the budget that they have, which is zero, and Pochettino just developing players off his own back and making them better, yeah. I, think, um, I think it's been terrific so far. Just you know, to touch briefly on a point as well, Pochettino recently said that um, winning trophies only fuels your ego. Yeah, he I said didn't that, like that actually. That kind of annoyed me. There's two ways you can look at that. So you know, he, he said that um, it's more important to solidify their place in the Champions League um, rather than winning trophies. Now, I thought of that from from two viewpoints. Now, the first one is that I completely disagreed with his mentality and thought that you know, as a, as a, a coach and a player at the top level your biggest desire is to win trophies it has to be yeah true. that's what goes Very down true, yeah. in the in the history books and that's ultimately what you should crave that's what defines yeah you. yeah and and that's what football's all about um and i think if it's it kind of sends an incorrect message saying that trophies only fuel your ego because that's not true um i understand where you know kind don't of really what he's understand trying to say. i don't even understand the message to be honest but with you. it's almost like he's trying to throw the towel in and defend that oh, we, we're probably not going to win a trophy um, but go to a know, big club and say that however you you get six million pounds winning the FA Cup you get 60 for finishing the top four now for Pochettino who's under um, a chairman or an owner like that under Daniel Levy um, you know that the financial situation matters hugely to him, especially with the Massive, new stadium yeah, correct. Um, and all those things going on. And you know, Pochettino works under a relatively small budget in comparison to the other um, yeah. top four or five. So I, I, I do get it from you know in, from a certain way because them finishing in the top four consistently brings a lot more revenue into that club than winning the Carlin Cup or the FA Cup does. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it depends what you want long term because 
it gets to the point where they, they will have to win a trophy. They absolutely will have to because... Look at Arsenal fans. I mean, yeah. Arsenal crave trophies. Oh, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're building a new stadium. Once, you know, we become... You know, we financially stand our own two feet, then we'll win trophies. Arsenal, well... And also as well, Arsenal yeah. won back-to-back FA Cups. They which did. Di- which didn't do a huge deal for them. But, they still, they still, but even then, they, they didn't really get the credit they deserved for that. No, they didn't. And, you know, that will go down on the record books that they've got another two FA Cup wins. And I saw an interesting tweet earlier on as well from an Arsenal fan. It was retweeted onto my timeline. Um, obviously, Pochettino was complaining about money and all this, that, and the third, and about trophies. And uh, there was an Arsenal fan who said, we were going through the same situation with the stadium, but we made it to a Champions League final with Danielson and Almunia yeah. and various other players, which I thought was very interesting, actually. Yeah, so you, you can't just, you know, whitewash history and be like, mm-hmm. you know, Arsenal haven't done anything. And they were in the same position. Arsenal have won FA Cups. They were in the Champions League final. Yeah. So Poch still does have, you know, a lot to live up to. There are standards that need to be met yeah. and new standards and the bar that needs to be raised. Yeah. So it's interesting to see, you know, how Spurs go. Yeah, no, that's, that's a fair point. Cool. All right. We go to a quick interval. We'll BRB after this break. And uh, yeah, add us up on the social media platforms, people. We'll be back right after this. We roll in. All right, we're back. Uh, We will go into Wolves against Everton. Um, Interesting game because I thought Everton might have a bit of backbone about them at home looking to challenge for what I would call a top eight place. Nope. And they got absolutely dicked on. Um, shout out to the cat that came on the pitch <laughs> as well. Um, that cat is now Everton's club record signing. <laughs> and uh, has still covered more ground than Cheng Toshin has <laughs> all season. And to be honest with you, if you're an Everton fan, that's pretty much the highlight of the game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Nuno doesn't like black cats. Apparently in Portugal, that's bad luck. Um, I don't feel any one way about a black cat coming on the pitch. Do what it likes, if you ask me. Yeah, couldn't give a fuck. But yeah, um, yeah that, um, oh, Jesus Christ. Everton get worse and worse. At what stage did he draw a line under Marco Silva and say enough is enough? I don't. I'm Because they're not going forward. They're not moving forward like people I, I fear he might not make the end of the season at this rate. I don't think he will. I think they'll get to about March. And maybe go, you know what, this is going But um, more. You turn it on his head, right? And some somebody would ask you the question of at what point do clubs give managers time to get their their style working? Is one season enough? So that mm. that's that, that's what the argument would be. The counter argument that we've seen um you know him do things in the past with Watford, um and we've seen the style of football that he plays when it works, it can work well. Yeah. So, you know, would you say that you know, Everton, they aren't going to get relegated. You know, they're not going to get anyone near the top six, as we know. So they're just going to hover somewhere it's within that, that mini of, league. Yeah, the, mid, the middle ground. Um, yeah, and they yeah. aren't going to win any trophies, obviously. So um, do Everton kind of say, you know, to the owners, kind of look at and go, look, the season hasn't gone to plan. We've invested good money. It hasn't gone well. We're going to draw a line under it. We're going to keep, Mar- you know, faith in Marcus Silva till the end of the season. Maybe he can make a few more sign-ins. Um, and then come next season, you know, let's see early part what he does. You know, could you look at it like that? Um, you could, but I just think, given the money they've spent, they've invested so heavily, I just don't understand For why. football's sake, I kind of want them to do that, because I hate it when managers get sacked um, after eight, you know, seven, eight, nine months. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I just don't like it, because in some cases, I don't think it's enough time. Um, but in the the way football is nowadays, um, he's walking a tightrope, and I do fear for him. Not that I'm saying it would be right if he, if he was to be sacked, but the way that you know, managers are treated nowadays, um, I, I don't think he's got many lives left because they are on just a terrible run. I think they've won three and 12, mm. um, which for a club the size of Everton is awful. It's not um, good, is it? They've also won just one of nine Premier League games this season against teams starting the day higher than them in the league. Now you talk about um, the ambition of Everton. We've 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 brought this up numerous times in the past. Yep. You know they're one of those clubs that could possibly, um, or one of the clubs that should be looking to try and get anywhere near that top six. Um, and the ambitions of the money they've invested and the players that they've signed, and that stat is is damning for them because you know if they want to start doing that, then it's just all well and good beating some of the teams uh, you know in and around them and below them. But you've got to start taking some sort of points off the teams. You know, in, in your area and above you, you have to if you're going to aspire to get yeah, in that, that top six. Le- that mini league is a tough league. You know what's really yeah. interesting during the um, 
what I would call a hiatus while we were off. Um, if people who follow us on Twitter may have actually seen it. I tweeted um, some Leicester fans and I asked them about Claude Puel and I said, what do you think of Leicester's position? Where do you think Leicester should be given the players they have? Yeah. And Leicester fans are adamant that they should be in eighth position, minimum eighth position, maybe even seventh, right? They said, we spend heavily, we expect good football, it's boring, it's dull to watch, we're mm-hmm. inconsistent. And I remember sitting there thinking, you've just described Everton. Yeah. You've just described Everton. And do you know what? We'll probably tweet some of the Everton fans as well to get their opinion too, because it's really good to interact with fans of clubs outside the top six. Loads of Leicester fans took the time to tweet us, so we really appreciate that. And... Um, yeah, it's interesting that Leicester, they feel, given the resources at their disposal and the money they've spent and the players they have, they should be hi- higher. I think Everton fans will probably be in the exact same boat. When I had that conversation, it was sort of a mirror image of Leicester. It is It is just that mini-league. I think their expectations and their ambitions should be very similar. You know, West Ham, Everton, well, yeah, West Ham's another Leicester. One, yeah. um, you know, you've, you've got a little cluster of clubs there that should all have kind of a similar ambition. You know, yeah, they should hundred percent, hundred percent. They should just be the clubs that are looking to try and get, or, or you know, bridge the gap if you like between the top six sides. Um, and at the moment, none of them are you know are getting anywhere close. You know, no, no. Wolves. You know, shout I'll, out I'll to t- Wolves again, bro. I'll touch upon them a little bit more later. Um, but they're doing a fantastic job. They sit in seventh, um, which is is an outstanding achievement so far, um, and. They they just look good. They've won they've won three in a row now. Every time I watch them, I actually enjoy the game. Yeah, as in just purely from a neutral perspective, I sit there watch the Wolves game and go, you know, I really enjoyed that. But yeah, the, the really entertainment good. value of yeah. Wolves is is pretty good, and they've scored three plus goals now in three consecutive top flight matches. That's the first time they've done that since nineteen eighty. Mm. You know, the the Wolves that has been promoted to the Premier League in you know within the last decade or so is not. You know, we don't look back on them with fond memories. You know, completely were, different animals. Yeah, yeah completely different. They'd yeah. go up, they'd they come back down, go up again, come back down, and you know, they were one of those clubs that you just never thought you were going to get much from. Totally different animal now altogether. So just goes to show, um, doesn't it, with the right recruitment and the right manager, a bit of investment as well. A bit of investment. I mean, they haven't have invested as heavily as an Everton, but they play. Such, or even a Fulham. Or even a Fulham, yeah. But yeah. They, the 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 significance of it is that. There's just a style that everybody buys into, and I, it's just just great to watch. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, you know, I criticise Wolves a little bit at the start of the season, as we all know, but um, they've certainly proved me and many other people wrong. I mean, mm-hmm. looking at the the team, the midfield is terrific. You've got uh, Dendonka, Neves, Jamutinho. <coughs> that's a terrific midfield. You put that yeah. against any it's other Premier League, well, yeah. You put is. that in any, you put that against any other Premier League midfield, and they will give them a terrific yeah. game. Brilliant, brilliant side. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cheng Toshin again up top. I mean, Jesus Christ. I don't know when Everton are going to sell this guy. <sighs> Everton have good players. They've got good players. I don't know why they can't find the right balance. I don't know what they're missing. Even if Everton got a 25 goal a season guy, would he have the supply to score those goals? You'd like to think so, but I mean, realistically. It doesn't tell you that, that, that they would at the moment. I think. No. There's, there's a little bit of deadwood in that team as well at the moment. You look Who at would you look at as deadwood? Baines, Baines. Baines, yeah, Baines stands out. Too, um, I think he gave away was it a penalty? Um, he did, yeah. Baines, Baines of Baines of six or seven years ago would be you'd be you'd back Baines, but not now. Yeah, you got Baines, you know, and he's been a very good player for Everton over the years. He's a good servant, um, wouldn't he? But he, he, you know, he shouldn't be getting in that starting eleven. You got uh, Theo Walcott. Best jersey behind him. Yeah, Schneiderlin. I don't think was ever an Everton player to start yeah. with. I think he's a Manchester United player, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he's definitely not an Everton player. Yeah, um, it's it's an important period for Everton now because it's it's kind of a stick or twist situation. You know, the, you know, the stats will tell you that Allardyce was doing better. He's picking up more points, mm. but it wasn't the style that they wanted. Andre you know, Gomez the, looks a player though. Yeah, his, his goal, goal was oh, oh, shout out as well. Brilliant goal that was. Brilliant try. Um, but that was about all that was positive for Everton. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's tough because they got rid of Allardyce because you know apparently didn't play the style of football that they want to see. They bring in a manager that that apparently brings that style of football, and it's, and it's not happening. They've played mm. some good stuff this season in patches. Yeah, just um, haven't been consistent. But yeah, but it's just no one here consistent enough. So. Oh, yeah. It's an interesting one, we'll see. Yeah, no, very interesting indeed. Um, just a few stats from Everton Wolves, we'll yeah. go over that now as well. Um, having a quick scan through the information here, where's the stats, where's the stats? Uh, uh, uh. Do you know what, I can't find any stats. It's because you're not the real stat man. Was, that, was, that, was the game that bad? 
Jesus. Yeah, there wasn't many when I looked. Yeah, do you know what? No, there's not. Sorry, 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 people. Uh, the main stat is a cat run on the pitch. That's it. <laughs> there, it's there's a great not, stat, there's not much else to discuss. There was one cat in ninety minutes that came on the pitch. That was it. So yeah, no, but um, yeah, Everton. We'll see what happens. And Wolves, you know, shout out to them because they've been superb. Um, Palace, Fulham. All right, we mentioned Fulham's um, transfer signings at the start. Yeah, I just uh, if I'm a Fulham fan. I'm just looking at them thinking, who's head of recruitment in Fulham? Do we know? Do we know who makes those decisions? I don't know. Who the fuck is recruiting in short. Fulham? Like, it's like, oh, you clearly need defenders. Like you said, Gary Cahill would have been perfect. You probably could have gone for a Marcus Rojo, maybe an expensive yeah, price, no, maybe try to loan shot. him, maybe a Phil Jones or Chris Smolin. Uh, but no, they decided to go for Ryan Barbel and Markovic. For what? You don't, you're leaking goals left, right and centre and you decide to sign two attacking players. Frustrating, it's so frustrating if you're a Fulham fan because we, you know, we've correctly praised them on episodes previously on you know, the players that they have um, from an attacking perspective. You've All got, those good players they have won't yeah. stick around as well. They won't stick because around. Because you've got, you've got the main man Mitrovic who gets most of the goals. Um, obviously around. you've got um, Seri. Schurler, um, Sessegnon, is it Viet- Vieto? There's, there's, um, yeah, one sticker. None of them will stick around. Like Sessegnon, I don't. Now he's tasted Premier League football. Mm-hmm. I don't think he'll go back to the Championship. Yeah, and it's it's bizarre. You know, I, I mentioned Gary Cahill before it even was was rumored that much. I tagged you in it afterwards, you know, mm. um, and I thought someone like him would have been, you know, a real good head to have around the club in the changing room. A lot of experience. You know, not the quickest anymore, but he would have added something. He would have added a lot it. of um, a lot of experience to a back line so, that's relatively young as well. If I'm a Fulham fan, I'm so frustrated right now because you, you know feel you for think them, bro. I feel for them. They said really it, do. last but one um, in the league, and you know they come up to the January transfer window. And you think, you know, if we could just do a couple of bits of decent business here now, um, strengthen defensively. Ranieri's come in. You know, um, we've seen a few little um, promising games. You know, they won four two. In the week, they came back from two down against was it Brighton, I believe it was. Ah, uh, um, yes, it was. Yeah, it was a good comeback. Did, did so well. Yeah, Mitrovic was excellent. Um, and you just think if they could have done a few bits of you know good business um, defensively, then you know they have Surely every chance. There must have been at least, given the scouting network they have at their disposal, there should it. I'm assuming there has to be at least two defenders out there they could have brought in. Hundred percent. Two decent yeah. defenders. Mm-hmm. And for them to not bring anybody, oh Jesus Christ! It just beggars belief. Like, yeah. it's like waving a white flag because mm-hmm. they cannot stop conceding goals. <coughs> I mean, looking at this statue, Fulham are the first side in English top flight history to lose eight consecutive yeah. London derbies. They conceded more away goals than any other Premier League team this season, thirty-two. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what, what we got here? We got um, oh Mitrovic, right? Has, he didn't have a shot on target. Mitrovic, Mitrovic has forty percent of their goals this season. So, all right, yeah, you could make an argument that maybe they needed more firepower to share the goals around, but at the same time, it wasn't a real issue. And no. they haven't addressed the issue. No. Fulham will go down. If, it. If, if, if you have to ask me now, I will tell you that Fulham and Huddersfield will go down. Well, you know, Huddersfield, we, you know, we wrote off weeks and weeks ago. And I predict, did I predict Fulham to be in the top 10 or close this season? I think you did, yeah. Fuck's sake, man. Jesus. But, you know, they, I think they're seven points from safety now and it was a big win for Palace as well because that puts them seven points clear I want to say massive win um, of safety so you know you'd like to think that that puts them in a good position to avoid that now but um, yeah you know Fulham were that club at the moment where like I just said you know if they'd have one or two okay signings defensively they got a little bit of bulk and going forward Ranieri you know as we know is, is you know is, is a very good yeah. manager Ranieri can't turn water into wine every time no though. It's not, that's it's the not thing, but possible. you know, if they'd have done a few, a few bits better in the transfer market, I would have given them a chance. But yeah, I think no, that's I uh, that's disappearing. Um, Christian Benteke didn't score, but looked on it, and that strike he had, I have never seen an overhead kick hit with such ferocity. Yeah. Power, fuck me! I thought he was going to break the. I don't know goal. if you um if you remember, he scored one Beast. against against United um when they lost. It was the game that Anthony Martial made his debut. And oh, for, yeah, yeah, yeah for United Liverpool, were yeah, two yeah. up. Benteke gets one back to when then Martial, you know, you know, scores. But 
you hit one with some venom then, but this was something else. Yeah, and he's a powerful boy, mind, let me tell you. Yeah, he, and if he gets his head in the right place, oof, we could be I think, you know, that could have been a goal of the season contender. I think it still would have come second to Andros Townsend uh, um, in the Etihad. And you remember that one? I remember that one. But I, that would have been right up there. So really well. unlucky from uh, Benteke there. Yeah, Palace, I mean, looking at the quality they've got on their side, um, you know, you got Benteke on his day, very good player. Uh, Jordan Ayew, very good player. Schlupp is not a bad player either. Milohojevic, uh, Townsend, Van Arnold, they like. Sarko isn't the worst defender in the world. Um, the the sort of two that's they're going to struggle to keep, I think. Um, Zaha obviously was out um, after his yeah. little Southampton uh, meltdown the other day. Just a quick opinion on that. We've um, we've talked about Zaha multiple times. He was in your Chelsea transfer video as well. Yeah. Zaha wants to play for a big club. He's going to have to accept he's going to get a kick in. It's tough. You cannot cry about it on the pitch. I understand he wants protection, and referees do have a duty to protect him more. But at the same time, he cannot just have a meltdown like that. Because I think it was Ward Prowse that just (coughs) completely got in his head and just psyched him out. And he just lost it completely. So immature. Very immature. Such an immature movement. For someone especially who is the focal point of that team the Palace team and they rely on him so much that's their go-to guy for you to have a meltdown like that it's pretty bad he came out and he apologised afterwards he's like look I'm going to learn yeah, from yeah. it but as you can do you know, with I, social yeah. media but um, it's totally unacceptable and I, if I'm Roy Hodgson I'm I putting rage him I put an armour on his shoulder in training and I'm saying to him you need to grow up yeah. I, I totally understand your frustrations it, but, but you have to grow up. You have to get on with it. Bigger and better players yeah. than him get kicked out of mm-hmm. the game all the time. So yeah, yeah so um yeah, they'll struggle again, I think, to keep Zaha. Um the name that comes up a lot recently, and I was um actually speaking to Vecchia about it before we came on. Um Man City are potentially looking at Aaron Wan Basaka. Now, he has been nothing short of sensational this season. He had man in a match again on the weekend. And, He's had a few um, goals as well, yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, he could easily go to Man City and make an impact. I'm, I'm calling it there. Him and Ben Chilwell seem to be the fullbacks that Guardiola is interested in. Whether actually anything comes of it, who knows. Um, but Ben Chilwell, as we saw for you know City on the weekend, they were without a recognised left back. Um, Danilo got dropped. Kyle Walker's been dropped. Guardiola's having doubts. Do you reckon Van Basaka can go there and do something? Possibly. Um, Guardiola is the type of manager if he is going to make a big move that he wants to go under someone like Guardiola um, someone that will allow him to he won't have to change his game you know um, mm-hmm. and I think there there's a possibility that, he, that he's got the quality to fit in with um, I think he does Guardiola's I think, if, I think you, you put him in with a progressive coach like a Guardiola yeah. you could see you could see a very good player yeah no, very I, good player. I, I can't not see it do you reckon they would do better with Chilwell or Wan Bissaka? Because I know you're a huge Chilwell fan as well. Do you know what though? Wan Bissaka, I think I th- I think they go for both. To be honest, with you I think City are, City aren't scared to spend money when the time is right. I know they've been a little hesitant in the past um, when it comes to Sanchez and Fred. <coughs> that cough better not be back, by the way. No, I so Sanchez so and Fred. We had a lot of remarks about that cough as well. <laughs> they were like, "Why does he keep coughing?" Chlamydia was back, people were sorry. It's gone now. But um yeah, I th- I just think one Basaka and Chilwell, Guardiola will go for the two. Or at least one of them. I see they'd have like seven fullbacks then, wouldn't they? I I don't think Danilo will be there long time. Danilo, Delph, they put Laporte there, Delph got Walker, is more of a Mendy, Wan Basaka, Chilwell. But none do, do they want Ashley Young as well? Nobody wants Ashley Young. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants Ash- no, Ashley. No, Ashley Young's misses as well, Ashley Young. <laughs> well, let me tell you, if they go for Juan Bissaka, I think they'll have... Anyone who actually goes for him will have a terrific young player on their hands. Yeah. He's only, I think he's 21 right now as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, Juan Bissaka would be a very good shout. That's yep. my take. Well, I too much. Yeah. What's the um, quick quick, uh, quick score check as well? Uh, still 1-1, I believe. The Sky come? Sports... Um, I guess about 60. Sky Sports, it says 1-1 oh, one, yeah, one there. Oh, yeah, 57 minutes And then gone. I stopped oh, it's updated now, yeah. 1-1, one, one, 58 minutes gone. Interesting. We'll keep you updated. When this comes out, you'll all have seen the, the score anyway, but we'll keep you updated through the video just for mm. potential uh, anticipation and comedy purposes. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So, yeah, we'll draw a line under Palace and Fulham. Um, Burnley, Southampton. Yep. Um, there's two games that I thought oh, covering them is going to be a bit of a ball ache and this Great is game. one of them <laughs> um, Nathan Redmond the one thing I'll say about him do you reckon he looks like Nuno the Wolves manager 
I noticed this the other day. I was like, has Nuno got a son? <laughs> like, Nathan Redman looks the fucking spit of him. Yeah, it's, that, it's the little facial hair as well. It's the it? facial hair and yeah. the hairline, and, and I'm just looking at him thinking. Maybe he just, um, you know, just models himself on. Maybe he does. Nuno. I think Nuno has been shagging about. That's what I think. And I think he was in the UK long the before. The rumour mill is going. It is. Look, <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. That's what I think. But anyway, going back to the game. Um, actually, great goal from Redmond. He's a terrific player yeah, on his very day, good. isn't he? And um, Southampton, they will rue their missed chances. Um, in terms of the Burnley situation, can you see them staying up? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I can see them staying up as well. I think um, it... it it was a game I, I, you know, I didn't think was going to be all that great, but it was one of the more entertaining fixtures of the weekend. And do you reckon? Yeah, I, I, I did enjoy it. There it was, was all right. There's a bit of controversy, which, which yeah. I like, um, and, and it was kind of like um, both sides were on a good run. I think both of them were on like a four and five game unbeaten run. So neither side wanted to lose the game, um, you know, to to stop any momentum that they were building up, and, and neither of them did. Mm. So. I think Ashley Barnes was... I think he was very hard done by, actually. Do you reckon? I do believe so. Um, was it a storm or a penalty? No, but I think there was definitely enough, more than enough contact. And to, the, and to then get given a yellow card for simulation... <laughs> yeah. And, and if we talk about Zaha's bad reaction, Ashley Barnes, if you saw it... He, um, he had a meltdown. He reacted terribly to the official as well. He, he had was a meltdown. right in his face, a screaming. Meltdown. So... Um, you know, he he would perhaps be lucky not to see any re, you know retrospective action. I mean, well, I can understand this frustration. It's a little different to the Zaha one mm-hmm. in a sense that he, all right, yeah, we we'll, we we'll call it he, he is hard done by. Mm-hmm. It's not like the you no know, the Zaha one. If she's getting the shit kicked out of him and he yeah. just absolutely had a meltdown, his was you know it was one uh, an isolated incident and he shouldn't have reacted the way he did. But I get it, yeah. Yeah, but um, you know, Ashley Barnes, a quick start on him, he scored 15 Premier League goals for Burnley since the start of last season, which is more than any other player, so he is kind of like their, their, their go-to guy, I know. He is, yeah. I, I saw um, a, a decent stat on, um, is it J, JB Goodmanson they've got as well, um, a Burnley player who, who does tend to, you know, chip in with oh, a good amount of... Oh, from the Icelandic lad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, does tend to chip in, um, you know, with a few bits here and there, but it's mainly Ashley Barnes. Yeah. Um... And he did go on to get you know the penalty towards the end, which um, which got got him the point, which I think it was Crouchy um, actually yeah, created. Yeah, stretches back. He, He's I back in he, a big time. He'll contribute something for them because his experience alone in that dressing room will be so helpful. Especially the way they play as well. You know, they they're not known for um, fluid tiki attacking. Tucker, yeah, yeah ticky tacka football. They tend you know they they rely on set route pieces. One, yeah, route, route one. one. Stuff, yeah. And you know, if you're bringing him on for if you're a centre half and it's and it's one one or you're you're winning one nil. You know, you've got Peter Crouch coming on for the last 10, 15 minutes. You ain't going to enjoy that because no. he's it's, a lump. It's Fellaini, it's Fellaini-esque almost. Isn't Andy Carroll-esque as well. Yeah, you know, Andy like Carroll-esque. Uh, that group of players who probably all He'll, he'll come on them. and they'll put balls in the box and he'll he'll cause problems. He will. Crouch, tech, we, we obviously we mock Crouch a little bit, right? But technically, he's shown he's actually very good. Yeah. He's and probably he's, far better than some of his, yeah. his peers. He, he made quite a humorous comment um, in an interview where... Um, they asked him about his age, and he's you know thirty eight or something now. And, is he you know, that old? Yeah, yeah he's just he just, just been thirty eight. Jesus Christ! Um, that and he was saying, you know, what would he be a bit past it? And he said, look, you know, I was never blessed with pace, so I didn't have the pace to lose. <laughs> yeah, <good chance. laughs> so you can't yeah. say well, he's lost a yard. He said because I didn't have the yard in yeah, the first yeah. place. So um, his his big attributes has always been um, he's got decent feet. Um, he's got you know a good reading of the game, but mainly you know he's a very good head of the ball. And it's you know it's his height advantage. You know he he's a good target man. So he is a good target and he, man. And you know he said himself, you know, that he hasn't lost that, and you don't really lose that. Like you lose other attributes such as pace and things like that. So yeah. um, I think he'll do okay. Yeah, he did. Did you see the um, the Burnley transfer video they did for him? The announcement video. Did you see that with the robot? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think it had, over all platforms it had about two million views, mm-hmm. um, which is incredible um, considering it was a very low budget um, video. And uh, yeah, no, it was really good. Shout out really, to really uh, good, the yeah. guy who does their social yeah, media. Yeah, shout know? out to him, man, because that's, um, um, that's a brilliant effort. Yeah, yeah. Um, quick start on uh, Southampton as well. Um, they're unbeaten in five Premier League games, so that's their longest run in the Premier League since October 2016. Ralph's doing his thing, isn't he? Ralph he's is doing really, his thing. He's really what? changed the dynamic. Can I, um, can I get a request on his surname as well? Ha- uh, can, can I do it uh, in an accent, though? You can do it however you like. Harsen Hotel. <laughs> is that how you say it? It is, yeah. Harsen Hotel. It, it took a number of episodes. Harsen Hotel. Those who have you know watched the episodes regularly will know that um, that didn't come so naturally to <laughs> no, you. No, that it? doesn't no. come naturally to me at all. Rafe. Yeah, Rafe. Rafe for a little while, but as our American fan base calls it. Exactly, yeah. 
Um, but no, I, th- you know, I thought a, a point was, you know, I would say, pretty much a fair result. Um, a draw, sorry, was a was a fair result. Towards yeah, the yeah, end. no, totally agree. Um, Southampton have won eight points in their past four Premier League away games, as many as they managed in their previous eleven. Again, decent. Ralph showing his uh, showing his hand there. Uh, Southampton unbeaten in five Premier League games, also their longest run without a defeat in the competition since October 2016. Mm-hmm. Again, we'll give Ralph full the credit. Uh, all five of Redmond's Premier League goal involvements for Southampton this season have come under Hasenhutl, with five goals and two assists in 10 appearances yeah. I think, all down um, to Ralph again I think Southampton fans and Burnley fans will be quite happy at the moment because the, these two clubs seem to be on a fairly similar trajectory in terms of um, on the way up I think they're unbeaten in 5 or 6 yeah um, it's not bad now. is it yeah and you know, all of a sudden if you're a Burnley or a Southampton fan um, then you know there's there's a good bit of positivity coming around the glass is half full again yeah, yeah. it is no totally agree so I think yeah. both of those clubs will be fine there's far worse below them yeah, I think that's the key thing for them is that whilst they may lack a little bit of quality in certain areas, mm-hmm. there are people like Fulham and Huddersfield that are far worse. Yeah. I think it's just a shootout now between Cardiff and whomever gets dragged in towards the um, towards the end, to be honest with you, because I can't see Fulham and Huddersfield staying up. But you never know. Yeah. Stranger things. Yeah, no, no, of course. All right, cool. That actually leads us nicely into Cardiff. Yeah. Um, yeah, emotional scenes um, at Cardiff. It's um, it's never going to be an easy game. The Arsenal game, I thought they might nick something, but Arsenal had a little bit too much midweek for them. Um, the whole Salah thing, it was... It, it, I don't want to say... <coughs> th- I, I, they kind of propelled them to victory. I'm going to say... I, oh, I don't know if this is the terminology I'm looking for, so I want to use the right words. Not that they used it to their advantage, but they used the the, the sort of they they. Oh, what's what yeah. I'm looking for? Do you know what I mean? I yeah, can't put it into words. It, I'm really struggling. I think it just gave them words. a bit of extra incentive. Impetus. That's yeah. What I'm look for. There was something more to play. It was something more on the line. It seemed. Yeah, yeah. There was um, an extra incentive. Yeah, because yeah, it was. You know, as you you know, we just touched upon there. They're in a relegation dogfight. Um, three points for them was massive. Um, Bournemouth coming off the back of a very good win um, yeah, at Chelsea, win, yeah. so their tails will be up. So it was a really emotionally charged afternoon, um, and I think Neil Warnock um, came out and said that when he gave the players the team talk, he said, "No, oh, let's do this for Emiliano. Um, mm. you know, if if you give me just one thing today, I want a proper performance. Just put in the performance, yeah. and if you put in the right performance, then the result will come. It and it a, did. It was a lovely tribute yeah. as well from Cardiff Brilliant, around yeah. the stadium. It was um, really, really nice. And having seen all you know the flowers outside and everything, Cardiff fans have really been a credit to the situation. I see. I think I saw them in. They were at a Nantes game as well. Did you see that? Yeah. They were. They were actually um, there not long after the Arsenal game. I think a few of them went over. So bravo to them as well. That's a hell of a track. Shout out to them, Arsenal. As well, they named him on their team sheet, didn't they? In the in the week. Oh, they put him on the yeah. the yeah yeah. They little details, it, yeah. you know, but yeah. it's just nice little um, you know bits of respect that you know um, you know they paid to him there. So I yeah, thought so that was it's really a nice. horrendous situation, yeah. man. And um, yeah. it's, a, it's really hard to put that Salah situation into words because uh, I think it was um, Sol Bamba that came out and said a lot of those Cardiff players now are actually scared to fly after that. It, the, the the impact it has mentally on them. Just moving forward, little things like getting on a plane and yeah. just you know maybe taking it a scares you, of course flight. it does. I I feel bad for them, man. I yeah. really do. And it, we'll never know how Salah could have impacted their season. He could have been the guy to keep them up and maybe keep them up for the next yeah. few years. And then he could have maybe gone on to play for Argentina mm. and and various other things. But um, yeah. uh, it's one of life's mysteries, yeah. I guess. It's um like I said, you you know before we started recording this episode, um. It's another tragedy this season. Um, you know, we, you, Leicester, we know about yeah. the Leicester um, tragedy, um, which happened, you know, just a couple of months ago. Obviously, this now, you know, and I, like I said, you, I just hope that, like they say, things come in threes. I, I, you know, I just hope that's that's the last bit of awful news that we have to, um, you know, yeah. we have to find out or or experience this season because. Um, I don't, we don't need anything else to happen because yeah. it would just be you know, the absolutely yeah. terrible. So um, a massive tragedy, but um, the only thing Cardiff and the Cardiff players could do was get the three points to, just to give them something, um, yeah, that's something it. to shout yeah. about. And you know, um, Bobby Reed, I thought Shout-out he's very, very good Reed. on the day. Yeah, he played very well, didn't he? He yeah. seems to be adjusting to the Premier League a mm-hmm. bit more now. Um, and he's starting not to look like a fully-fledged Premier League player, but he's starting to do bits yeah. where you think, yeah, this guy could be a Premier League player. Yeah, yeah and um, I've actually given him my player of the weekend. Um, it sort of segues nicely into that. Yeah. Um, for 
a couple of reasons. Um, you know, one one because um, of you know, the, the impact that he had, the two goals that he scored. Um, like you said, he's starting to adjust to the Premier League now, but also um, just what he did for them, given the situation. Um, they needed the three points massively, and he was the guy that stood up and did the business on the day. So, yeah, he manned up um, well. You know, in, in a day that it could have gone completely the other way, um, you know, he was the guy that got them the three points that keeps them in the mix. Um, yeah. So, for, you know, for that reason, he was my player of the weekend. But um, a very, very difficult situation all oh, around. But they, bro, they you know, they did difficult. only the only thing they could do, and it was nice for them to get a clean sheet as well. Yeah, they've kept their back-to-back um, home Premier League clean sheets for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bobby Reid as well actually becomes the third player to score a goal on his birthday this season really you know happy birthday Bobby Reid yeah. um, I don't know no Andy Martial is one really yeah and uh, Ricardo uh, Pereira as well Pereira was that the Pereira goal against City, City I think it was yeah screamer that's a hell of a goal to score on your birthday that mm-hmm. is let me tell you uh, yeah just a few quick uh, Cardiff stats uh, Cardiff picked up their first Premier League victory in five games drawn one lost three uh, this was their first win by more than one goal since uh, the Fulham game in October where they won 4-2 um, Bournemouth have lost their past seven Premier League away games conceded at least twice in each match so next time you see full, uh, sorry, Bournemouth on an acker and they're away, feel free to thank us. <laughs> so, yeah, Cardiff, as you said, kept back-to-back home clean sheets, uh, scored 15 seconds into the second half. Reed's second goal for Cardiff was the fastest scored after half-time in the Premier League since Arnautovic for West Ham against Huddersfield, mm-hmm. which was 11 seconds in. Um, so, yeah, yeah, shout-out to Cardiff, man. Like I said, very difficult circumstances. It's been just an absolute fog around the club the past two weeks yeah. the uncertainty of the Salah situation we won't go into depth on the actual Salah situation because a lot has been said and done and um, I'm sure over the next coming weeks and months um, no there'll be accountability down the line Some someone will have to take accountability for yeah. what happened um, again you know th- We've mentioned Salah an awful lot as well. Um, the pilot, uh, is it David Ibbotson? Is that his name? David Ibbotson, I think. Isn't Ibbotson, it? yeah. yeah. Um, again, shout out to his family. Um, they found a body, as I said earlier on today. Whether that's Salah or him, I honestly don't know, but I hope they find both just so there is some type of closure there. Yeah. Um, because God forbid they bring that plane up and there's only one body on there. I mean, that's just question marks that are yes. left for a lifetime. Yeah, you you, you don't need that, do you? you know? No. And, in, in such a difficult situation, all you want now, and like you said, unless you're praying for an absolute miracle, yeah, um, which unfortunately seems you know highly unlikely, it seems very unlikely. Um, then the only thing that you can you can get now to put it to bed is is closure. And that's yeah, it. And, and just a quick FYI, there's we like a bit of banter right amongst clubs, and we like a bit of banter amongst fans. Any fans out there making jokes about that situation, just just don't. Like, it's just it it's just we. I find it very strange that a situation yeah. like that would happen. And a, a man's family would be in so much pain, and they would, they would continually make fun of him online. I don't know. To me, that's weird. I mean, maybe but, I'm raised yeah, different. Some situations just just go too far, and people don't understand the line that you have to draw between, um, you know, this football banter and this rivalries, and and then there's just things that you just there's just areas you don't go into. No. You know, Rio Ferdinand made a comment um, about Newcastle quite recently, and they started, you know. Um, making jokes about his his um, oh, his late bro. wife, That's and just, not oh. to go into detail with that one. It's just you read things like that, and you think, okay, just stop. You know, please. I mean, it's just always stop. some little virgin in his spare bedroom yeah. as well who hasn't got the heart to say it in real life. Yeah, but so. yeah, we'll we'll draw a line under it. Um, yeah, like I said, shout out to Cardiff, excellent win. May that propel them forward. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of the um, situation for Bournemouth, I don't think they've got an awful lot to worry about, truth be told. No. They're going to be all right. Um, I, again, Bournemouth's next fixture coming up. Do we know what that is? Um, we don't, but I can tell you probably within the next 10 table, seconds. Because, um, they sit in 10th at the moment, don't they? I was so. going to say, again, I mean, if I tweeted Bournemouth fans and I asked them what their expectations are. Slightly different one, I think that would be. They've got... Um, yeah, they've, they're away to uh, Liverpool on Saturday. Really? Yeah. Be interesting to see what Bournemouth show up to that, actually. And then they're home, home to Wolves, then they're away to Arsenal, and then they're That's home... That's why I asked, because I thought I saw them against the big yeah. side. Well, they've yeah. got next four games, they've got Liverpool, Wolves, Arsenal, and City. <sighs> Ooh, Bournemouth fans. So that could see them maybe fall a couple of spots. But then after that, then, they've got Huddersfield... They have a much easier um, run-in. ...and Newcastle, um, and Leicester, and Burnley, Brighton... Fulham 
Southampton. They can pick up a couple of points from so, that, yeah. though. Yeah, you never so know. If they can come out of these next four games with anything, you know, maybe like maybe three, three points, maybe three or four points, then they would have done well. Mm. Yeah, no, shout out to them. All right, gang, quick PSA. Add us up on the social media platforms. We will be back shortly after, and we'll be back with the best of the rest. BV Podcast, episode 31. The gang's back. We're still watching this Liverpool game here. Mark Noble's just gone close. West Ham seem to have done okay so far. Yeah, they've um, quitted themselves well. Frustrated we uh, Liverpool by the sounds of it, and they've had a few chances. Um, again, now, which How long is left? About 10 minutes? 80 second minutes, so injury time. Yeah, take, give it yeah, take 10 minutes take. or so, yes. Yeah, so. wouldn't, be, wouldn't be very. Um, it would be very Liverpool y to get a, a last minute winner. Given this yeah, title I, I don't really want to comment on this right now because uh, see how I'm putting you on the spot there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna reserve judgment for now because we shall uh, reserve judgment. Yeah, just but, for um, the beauty of the title race, I think uh, if it's down to three points, um, then it really opens the door for City. Now it does, yeah. And as we said, Bournemouth go to Liverpool on the weekend, and mm-hmm. you know Solanke against his old club. You mm-hmm. never know. You first. never know. We hear the year first, indeed. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, we're going to Brighton Watford. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say about this, to be honest with you. Nil-nil. Um, other than Ben Foster had an absolutely superb game. I think it might have been the um, the Watford. Uh, it might have been the Watford Twitter page to put out a poll for man of the match. Did you see it? No. I, saw, I, um, I might be wrong. I know it was definitely a poll for man of the match somewhere. Anyway, I'm digressing. Right. So this poll basically said who would be your man of the match for Watford? Was it Foster's? Right arm, left arm, <laughs> right leg, <laughs> left leg. He you was generally that, that good. Uh, a very interesting question came up on match of the day. Um, ben Foster thinks he's too old to play for England, but they believe he could potentially be England's number one goalkeeper because he is that good. And he's maybe the best of a bad bunch right now. I mean, Pickford has been completely out of form. Tom Heaton's done okay at Burnley, but Burnley where they are, you wouldn't expect a Burnley goalkeeper mm-hmm. to be England number one. Um, who else am I missing? Angus Gunn's done okay as well. Um, I mean, Joe Hart's always going to be there or there about in Eber. What's it? Um, what's, oh, there's, there's someone we're missing as well. It'll come to me. But no, I, I, I get the point, you know. But mm. yeah, he's how old's he now, Ben Foster? Ben, ben Foster, I think, is at 31, 32, maybe. Yeah, I mean, if if he thinks he's too old... He I think seems th- to think he couldn't cut it at that level. You know, I, that's still young for a goalkeeper. Um, so, you know, I think he could certainly throw himself into the mix because he's quite experienced in the Premier League as well, you know. So One he's last been shot, do you reckon, for the Euros, maybe next? Well, you know, it, if he's gonna, you know, if he's happy to put himself in contention, mm. um, if he can get, you know, cons- you know, consistently perform for... Watford, you know, and they stay hovering in and around that top ten area. Mm. Then I think Gareth Southgate has to look to potentially consider him or Maybe even include him, call, him in the yeah. squad. Um, and that's how you get your way back in. You get into the squad, and you know, if a friendly comes up or in the in the Nations League, or I was going to ask like you, this, when is the next Nations League games? Because um, are the England playing Holland? Um, they are. I can't. I, I, I'd be like. This is how I little guessed. interest we have in international football sometimes, unless yeah. it's a major tournament. No, I'll, I'll watch it and show interest when it's on, but yeah. I couldn't tell you when it's on. I'm probably not even going to bother Googling it. No, but, I won't bother you. Um, yeah, I, I think he could definitely throw himself into the mix. So the, the England um, goalkeeping lineup at the moment isn't particularly strong. Um, Jordan Pickford is not exactly nailing down the position, is he? So Well, he's not, no. And you would have thought Pickford would have just made that his own. But yeah. Pickford has had various errors this season and has looked completely uncomfortable mm-hmm. on the big stage at times. Whereas Ben yeah. Foster has been there with Manchester United. At Watford, expectations aren't as big. But um, I think he, he could do a job. Did you go to West Brom? I think he did okay. Was it West Brom? He was at Ben Foster. I'm sure he was at West no, Brom. Not entirely sure. Potentially uh, might have been. Yeah. He did. You know, if it was there, he went and I remember doing well there. Um, also, so it's not a bad show at all. But um, it was probably the most forgettable game of the weekend. Sorry, uh, Brighton and Watford fans. Um, you've been involved it's in better. A, it's not a bad point for either side. In fairness, no. I mean Brighton is a difficult place to go. Watford would yeah. be happy with a point. And Watford are a tough team to play against, and Brighton will be happy with a point as well. So yeah, yeah. I mean, apart from the you know, the few good saves that Ben Foster made, chances were at a premium really um, in that fixture. So um, it didn't look like it was going to be too much more than a nil nil. No. Um, a couple true. of interesting stats: um, Brighton have failed to score in three consecutive home games in all competitions for the first time since January 2016. Do you think they could get sucked into the relegation battle? No. 
No, you think Duffy there's, too, there's too much there? Noah Dunk. Duffy and Dunk. Noah Duffy and Dunk. And Glenn, no way, yeah. Pascal. I think, I think I think they've got enough, so I wouldn't well, put them they, in that category right now. Ah, but yeah, they're a bit ahead in fairness. Yeah, they're on twenty-seven points, so yeah, they've got so a bit five of a cushion. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also as well, uh, a Watford stat. Um, this was um, Javi Gracia's thirty-ninth game in charge um, of Watford, um, which is more than any other manager um, for the club in the Premier League. Wow! So they've never had a Premier League manager that said more than thirty-eight games in charge. A full season. Yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. It's mad to think, you know, they've had a few a few seasons in the Premier League of Watford, you know. They've never really sustained it, but they've been in and out a few times. I would never have guessed that if you hadn't have said. I would never so have I guessed that. So I found that quite interesting. Yeah, that, it is um, very interesting. It's currently yeah. their longest reigning manager <laughs> in Premier League history. That's incredible. And they're doing okay. They're, they're doing all they're right. They're doing very well. Yeah. yeah, like I said, very good players, very good team. Um, they probably surpassed their expectations this season. Be interesting to see next season what their expectations are. I'm assuming a top 10 finish again, but you know there's certain fans out there that will go hang on a minute well why aren't we in eighth position so yeah give them the players well it depends on you know if they invest you got you, you expect west ham to invest leicester should invest um wills will probably invest again so if they want to maintain their push within that mix then they're gonna have to invest yeah and and keep some of the players that they've got as well i like yeah. gray i like dini i said very good players uh de yeah. lafayou is just an absolute gem of a footballer mm. if he actually gets his head in into gear I mean, like we've said before, his potential is just huge. So, um, But he seems very comfortable at a club like yeah. Watford, where he's the big fish in a small pond, which is interesting, really, isn't it? You know, he could be a smaller fish Some in a Some people like pond. that. You look at, like, a Zaha as well. They thrive on that sort of being, yeah. being needed, I want to say, being required. Because yeah. when you're in a bigger club, you're sort of just another piece in the jigsaw, whereas there, you're the go-to guy. Yeah. He seems to like that. He seems to thrive off it. So, yeah, he may stay. Yeah, and um, they've you know they've got Mr. Watford, they've got Troy Deeney, mm-hmm. um, they've got Will Hughes can come on as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, they've got some decent players, but I think um, in order to maintain a push, um, then they will need to add a couple more. Yeah. In the summer. True that, yeah. Um, yeah, like we said, not an awful lot we can really say about the game. Sorry, fans of uh, both sets of teams. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure there'll be plenty of other podcasts we can go into depth. We spoke about a lot about them in previously you know, in previous podcasts anyway. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, no, that's cool. So, all right, yeah, we'll go on to the Sunday fixtures. Mm-hmm. Um, should we go into the United game? Yeah, it was the first one on Sunday, wasn't it? I think? It was indeed the first one yeah. on Sunday, yeah. I'll let you kick that one off. Um, I mean... <sighs> It was. I. I don't want to. I was going to ask you this, right? Has the Solskjaer effect worn off a little bit? Because they seem, even though you, it sounds strange, United unbeaten in was in nine games. Yeah. The past few games I've seen them, they do look uh, very vulnerable, and even in the Leicester game, if it wasn't for De Gea making some terrific saves again, it could have been a very different story. I just think United have lost a little bit of momentum. As weird as that sounds, given the fact they're nine unbeaten. There's certain games they've ruled their luck, especially the Burnley one in midweek, might I add, where yeah. they were very lucky to come back from that. I mean, on another day, we could have been talking about United losing to Burnley and Leicester on another week, mm-hmm. should I say. So it's interesting. I mean, can United keep that up? I hope so. Well, my take on that is I don't think that the Solskjaer effect has worn off. I think we're merely seeing a different part of the Solskjaer effect because... Yes, um, you know the Burnley result was was a very disappointing result. Um, it's a game you'd expect them to win on the run that they were on, and at home as well, and against you know no disrespect, but against Burnley. Yeah. Um, however, if you'd have also said that they would be two 0 down on was it eighty seven minutes, eighty eight minutes, um, then to come back and respond in the way that they did shows a different side of United under Solskjaer. Shows a lot of character. It does show character. It does show a lot of character. You know, Solskjaer himself has been involved in numerous comebacks, late comebacks, and it's nice to see that you know he's also kind of having that effect on us as well, and that the players are playing right up until you know the the final whistle. So, um, the, the point was it was not what they would have wanted, but they've shown that they can dig in and they can respond and they can come back. Mm. The Leicester game for me shows something different altogether. Now, would I rather see them, you know, continue this um, really good attacking football that they've been showing in the, in the seven games prior to these two? Of course, I would. But they've won a game in which they didn't play well. They played well for ten, maybe ten minutes. The opening ten, fifteen minutes. And beyond that, yeah, um, not for much. there was a bit of magic from uh, Pogba into Rashford, mm. um, which you know we thought maybe it could be three or four year, um, but it wasn't to be. And you know. They they fell off the pace a little bit. They they didn't seem to be at the races. So, you know, it, it it wasn't great, but they still got the W. They got the three points. So they've got a game now against Fulham, mm-hmm. which is a chance for them to 
um, resurrect the sort of attacking play that they had. Um, and I think they will. And then the hard work starts. Oh, yeah, there's a yeah. big run of fixtures for that United so, side. And that is what will define United's season. Yeah, and Solskjaer as well. Yeah. Because if he comes out of, um, like it's, they've got PSG, um, and then it's Chelsea, and, it's, and then it's PSG again, and they've Arsenal. got City in there, Arsenal. Yeah. Um, so it's, 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 it looks gloom, you know. You, you you look at those that fixture list. I suppose list. that when you as and Liverpool as well. I suppose those there. are the games though that that's what defines the season. Yeah. Those are the games you look forward to most as a fan and a player. So you know we could you could come out the other side of those fixtures and we could be saying you know Sosa could lose all those games, could lose all those games, and you could you know people will be the first then to jump out and say ah you know we told you that he wouldn't do yeah. this and he wouldn't do that. Um, but if he comes out there with any sort of credibility and he you know say. He gets through to the next round of the Champions League. All right, he could go on to lose to City, but then he could also be Chelsea in the FA Cup. They could draw against Liverpool, you know. And mm. th- there's games in there which I do, I do expect them to get to get some victories in there. They have to, but I don't think the Solskjaer effect has has worn off. I just think he showed a different side of how how they can play. It's interesting. I've said all along this season. I think United are still very vulnerable. Um, I've seen nothing. There's no that, doubt. About I've it. seen nothing that. Um, that suggests otherwise. I mean, look, the run they're on is terrific. Long may it continue, but at the same time, I do think against better sides, they will be exposed. They got again against Spurs. They were quite lucky. De Gea with all those saves. Again, De Gea kept them yeah. in against Leicester. Against Arsenal, they were very at, solid. Yeah, at some point, that that luck will eventually run out. I think, and United will end up. Not getting a paste in, but I think somebody might stick two or three on them. And do you know what? That might not be the worst thing in the world, um, because you know everything is is rosy around this whole social regime at the moment. Mm. You know, and, and when you say that you know they they haven't lost in nine, it's worth you know also pointing out that they haven't just drawn quite a few games. They've won eight of those nine games, so um, you can go on an unbeaten run and get relegated. <laughs> You know, you could you could draw thirty eight games a season and get yeah, relegated. No, so it is worth pointing out that it's eight wins in nine, which is a very good run. But perhaps you know a humbling defeat wouldn't do them too much harm. No, that's yeah. true. Um, looking at the way this United team is developing, Rashford up top is yeah. an automatic starter. It <coughs> looks like Martial and Lingard uh, alongside him is sort of the preferred front three, which I get very similar to Liverpool's front three. It's pace, it's movement, uh, it's fluid, there's technique. Um, having a quick look at the Sanchez and... Oh, hang on, we're just looking at this Liverpool here. Full Bro- time. Full time, one all. Liverpool drop points. <sighs> Big. Big. Really big, bigly as Donald Trump says, bigly. Yeah. So anyway, going back to United. Yeah. So yeah, that uh, that front three they have. Where does that leave Lukaku and Sanchez? Um, Lukaku, I can see coming on and doing bits here and there, but Sanchez just looks so out of sort. He did nothing for his cause at all. He's really struggling. It's almost like since he lost, since he left Arsenal, it looks like Sanchez has lost a yard of pace. Maybe it was just the way Arsenal played and he was at the centre of everything that maybe we didn't notice it. Because mm-hmm. I was very excited about Sanchez joining United. I thought, terrific player. He's going to add something different to the team. He's added nothing. Absolutely nothing. Let's be honest. I mean, it, I've been a Martial critic this season because at times I think he's let himself down. But you would absolutely have Martial in that side over Sanchez right now. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, he had a good finish against Arsenal. He scored a good goal um, from a tight angle. Mm. Um, but it, he's had those moments on the United where he scored a goal um, or done something, you know, done something well in a moment, and he thought, "Will that be the moment that will help him?" Is that kick the off? catalyst? Yeah. And it just doesn't seem to be no, coming it's, from it's that. Not so, from um, you know, the jury is very much out on Sanchez at the moment. But like we just mentioned, they've got a real tough fixture list coming up. Um, where they're going to need a lot of players. Hopefully, he'll thrive under so, those yes. circumstances. So, you know, if he does happen to get an opportunity in, in the Champions League, um, playing against uh, proper quality, you know, opposition, um, you know, hopefully he'll take one of those chances should he get one. But he hasn't turned out to be the sign in that United wanted him to be. Most at definitely all. not. That number seven shirt seems to be a little bit cursed. Yeah. You know, you look at the players that have had it: Sanchez, De Maria, Valencia, Michael Owen, Memphis Depay. Um, none of them seem to be able to bear the weight of it, mm-hmm. which is really interesting given the fact that the players that have had it previously have just completely thrived in it. You look at George it's almost Best tarnishing the Beckham. number seven reputation. It is. You know, I kind of felt like it was tarnished when Michael Owen had it. 
Yeah. And then it went to Valencia. I remember thinking, really, you're going to give them that shirt? Yeah. That that because the shirt, if you you know if you know Manchester United, you know how historic that shirt is. So I was very interested to see um, Sanchez get it. It was a big statement from them going, "You're our guy." Yeah. And we, uh, yeah, I know for marketing purposes as well. All right, you give him a number seven. You know, that kind of um, I mean, it's going to sell. You more. tend to give like a talisman or a bit of a maverick yeah, number seven. That's what they thought they were getting. He was, was, a, be was that, a maverick, so but he hasn't been. There. Certainly not the worst choice. You no, know, no. Look at Owens and your Valencias, and and they're certainly questionable questionable decisions so it wasn't the worst choice but um, it's not doing him any favours um, United were kind of lucky though on the weekend you know, I, I've praised them but you know they did ride their luck in, in terms of the fact that Leicester um, just looked a bit bereft of ideas mm. um, a, yeah, be- a better Leicester you know, they didn't create too many you know, massive chances um, Leicester but they were knocking on the door a lot in the second half so um, a better Leicester side um, you know you, you could have argued that they might have got a point from that maybe more mm. but they didn't which is the main thing um, a couple of United stats um, which obviously you know, look pretty good at the moment so United have won five consecutive away games in all competitions for the first time since October 2012 really yeah um, which obviously big for them because they, yeah. you know, it's nice to build a bit of momentum as well. Um, since um, Solskjaer took over, Pogba has had a hand in more goals than any other Premier League player. So that's um, 11 involvements in a goal, that's six Getting goals, five assists. Um, and United have won more points than any other Premier League side since Solskjaer took over. So it's 22 out of 24, which is the best runner form in the league. Um, and a shout out to Rashford as well. Obviously, he made his 100th Premier League appearance. Yeah, he's doing terrific. Yeah. I said um, there was one chance he missed. I think it was the header in yeah. the first half where he should have bagged it. If Rashford wants to be an elite level striker, those are the chances you have to take. Yeah. Because those, you know, you look at your Ibrahimoviches back in the day, you know, your Lewandowskis, those lads bagged those chances. Yeah. And, you know, to be fair to me, he took the second one very well. Oh, the second well. one was superb. You know, had the, he missed the that pass, one? The pass, the first touch, the finish, brilliant. He missed one in the week against Burnley very early on where he, he shanked it so far wide mm. um, in the box as well. Um, I just hoped that that wouldn't get to him. And, you know, he had that chance that you said he missed early doors against Leicester. But it was nice to see that, you know, these things aren't getting in his head. They aren't affecting no, no, him as much no, now. Do you know so. what? He's there for the next chance and... He generally bags it, yeah. so yeah, good on him. He's United's well. number one um, striker, striking option at the moment. I would never have said that at the start of the season, Mike. No, me neither. I would absolutely never have said that Rashford would be United's number one striker. I think that's what we kind of always wanted it to be. You know, the yeah. the, the romance yeah. in it of him being the United lad through the youth system. You know, when he burst on the scene, that's what we wanted. And it's what we know, got. It was it was it was looking up to a certain point, even up to the beginning of the season, that it might never happen. But it's totally in his hands now. You know, mm. He's, you know, he's worked hard and he's created the opportunity for himself. He's taken it, and it's totally in his hands now. Hundred Premier League appearances for United at at his age, twenty one, is a huge achievement. Um, only Ryan Giggs is the only player to get there faster. Really? Um, just by twenty one days. Wow. Um, so apart from from Ryan Giggs, by less than a month, um, nobody's got there faster. He's an amazing than talent. Rashford. Yeah. It? The only criticism you can level at Rashford right now is there's certain chances that he should score. I say like the, the the easier chance he miss essentially, he'll yeah. score the harder chance. So that's what you'll say with Rashford. But on the whole, he's developing terrifically well. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you. Um, I, we missed um, one significant transfer out because it wasn't an incoming transfer. Uh, microphone head. Marianne. Yeah, he's uh he's in China earning what can only be described as a fucking superb wage for doing nothing. Because he's earning I think it's like eleven million or or ten million after tax, might I add. So let me tell you, this guy he knows what side his bread is buttered. Let me oh, tell you one hundred percent. That's a fucking great wage. For a guy now that wasn't gonna play for the rest of the season, will go live in a Chinese villa, right, for the next five years. Do absolutely fuck all, right? Other than chest the ball terrifically. Just earn a whack. And he will come away, right, with the best part of, I would say, comfortably 50 million. And, you know. Easily. If he hadn't already have set himself up for life, he's certainly done that now. Well, you look at Fellaini, probably the earnings he's had from football, you know, being at Everton and United. I'd say Fellaini's probably earned the best part of. 20 to 25 million already yeah so in that respect he's probably very comfortable you throw that extra on top bro i'm yeah. telling you the guy is minted yeah and um 
Now, I think it's a, it's a wise choice for him at this stage in his career because I think it's a good choice as yeah. well. I don't think it's a bad choice. He, he come under a lot of criticism actually, and and I don't think it's that deserved because um, it's not Fellaini's fault um, the type of player that he is and the attributes that he has. No, so he, you he, know what? There was there was there was times when he done well, but there was times then he was fucking awful. Like there was one time he gave a penalty away against Everton, and there was other times where I just remember thinking this guy is not a United player, and. He was sort of the image of everything that was wrong with United, but at the same time, the, the times when he played, he was the image of everything that was yeah. right. He wanted someone who was going to continually try. He was so he was so polarizing. That's what he was. People uh, tried to make um, Fellaini the scapegoat sometimes. When they we did. forget that it was it was us that signed him. Mm-hmm. You know exactly what player you're getting in Fellaini when you sign him. I didn't really see anything in his time at United. I didn't already know about him. No, not at um, all. He's he's clumsy. He's cumbersome, and you know when he was all fish. Yeah, and, and when he was giving away uh, silly fouls, or he was a bit aggressive and rash, and um, he's in the box. He said the, the one against Everton. It didn't surprise me because that's just the type of player that he is. Mm. But then when we did play to his strengths, which again, you know, it's not his fault that his strengths are not in alignment with United's, you know, um, history of how they like to play. All his technique is in his chest and yeah. his elbows. And you know when he was called upon, and when Mourinho. As much as we didn't like it, called on those tactics to try and salvage results. You know, more often than not, he did deliver. Look, Fellaini came up trumps many times, yeah. many, many times, and for that, United fans will always be thankful. But I think it's a good goodbye. Yeah. On, on it's time to move on. Yeah, He's earned good on. money, and also with Norton's well, he earned a couple of trophies. Um, in he the did. Process. He didn't do that bad in the end, did he? No, no. I, so he's got silver in his record, which is more than a lot of people can say. One thing I will say is he didn't thank the fans. In his leaving message, did you see his Twitter message that he put out? Not fully, no. No, a lot of United fans jumped on him for that. Um, I wouldn't be too upset about that, to be honest with you. He got a lot of sticks sometimes unnecessarily, got a lot of sticks sometimes deservedly. I didn't particularly care either way if he thanked the fans or not. He's earned his money. Best of luck to him, you know? Yeah, um, Yeah. indeed. I said, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, cool. All right, so, yeah, United continue continue winning. Um, Man of the match was Pogba. Do you think that was a fair shout? I would have said De Gea myself. I think um, the main reason that they won the game was Pogba's magic. So You're going to give it um, Pogba, yeah? I would agree with Pogba, yeah. Cool. They aim at decent saves, but nothing compared to what he's made in the weeks gone by. Yeah, no, cool. Um, yeah, just a big shout out to Leicester as well. Um, all the Leicester fans, like I said, that tweeted us, really appreciate it. It was a really interesting conversation, actually. Leicester fans, yeah. um, they think they should be higher than they are. Um, they did okay against United. They didn't do bad. I didn't see anything from Leicester. Um, that was incredibly brilliant, but I didn't see anything that was incredibly bad either mm-hmm. on the weekend. They showed flashes of, of skill, technique, a decent play. Um, Vardy, if he had took, I think it was the um, it's like a scissor kick against him, yeah. that would have been a luck. You know, it would have been a different game. They would have got a good point. Mm-hmm. Um, but I get where Leicester fans are coming from. Um, they do think that Puel is a little bit boring in his style, but I mean, again. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, the, I don't know what Leicester is, fans want. If, if you're a Leicester fan um, and you're looking at the table, it tells you a different story every week because of this mini league we keep banging on about. One minute they're seventh, then they're twelfth, then they're ninth, then they're tenth, then they're eighth, and you know when you sit in seventh, it's it's harder to criticise because you're the best of the rest. Yeah. But then in one week when you lose and everyone else wins and you drop to twelfth, then it looks a lot worse. Um, now be careful what you wish for because. Puel's come under a lot of criticism and, you know, like you mentioned with the conversation we had on Twitter, um, you know, I saw a lot of what the Leicester fans said and I do agree with some of their points. Yeah, some valid um, points, yeah. And again, I think it still comes back round to the fact that that extraordinary season that they had with the football that they played kind of clouds the expectations that they have in a yeah. way because... You know, like you said on the weekend they played some decent stuff and they weren't that they bad decent stuff. the weekend I was actually I thought oh, but, you know, they might get something here he's had some good results Puel you know they they got I think they got a good uh, who was it that they they drew with Liverpool um, in the week beat City um, did they, they beat, beat City they they beat City they beat Chelsea um, so you know he's close he, again something you know, yeah. he's had some really good results and you know they you know they could get him out get someone else in who plays a better brand of football but it might not work out so like I said it sounds very Everton-ish mm-hmm. yeah. know, we, we get Allardyce out to get someone else to play a different brand 
but that brand then doesn't necessarily work as well as the person before them. But time will tell. I mean, mm-hmm. shout again, shout out to the Leicester fans. It's great to interact with you. We've been, we, we've been wanting to know for a while, so um, for them to take the time to tweet us, yeah, no, it's really good. Um, moving forward, then we're going to the last game uh, of the weekend. Yeah, uh, City Arsenal. Oh, Arsenal fans. Arsenal fans are going there with a little bit of expectation, and it's the expectation that kills you in the yeah. end. They, um, Arsenal looked scared to play, I'm not going to lie. From the get-go, I mean, apart from the Koscielny goal, which was a decent little finish, but um, it's completely against the run of play, they didn't look like the Arsenal uh, of old uh, under Wenger, which sounds strange, but you know the Arsenal Wenger... Arsenal, the, the the really good sides, they would go to places like the Etihad. There'd be no fear. They'd play their game. They'd really cause you problems. They'd play a certain way. Emery's Arsenal, Me- Mesut was nowhere to be seen. Lacazette and Obama Yang had had absolutely zero service. I felt mm-hmm. so bad for them because it's easy to criticise your strikers for not doing nothing, but you, they need a supply line. And the whole um, the whole Arsenal approach, I just felt was wrong. And City weren't even that good, to be honest with you. City didn't really get out, of, of, they yeah. didn't, they didn't get out of first gear, to be honest with you. Not that they needed to, but um, uh, look, Aguero again, probably one of the greatest strikers of all time, I would say. Yeah. Of all time. Not just the Premier League, of all time. <coughs> the guy is a gunman. Yep. He is just superb. Like His goal-scoring record is nuts. I think he's got like 14 hat-tricks for Man City. Um, and, and to be yeah. honest with you, bro, the guy is just wild. But... We we all expected a Man City win, right? Nothing new there. But I expected Arsenal to go with some type of attack and intent. And for me, bro, I just kind of felt a little bit let down by Arsenal. I know a few of the other fans on Arsenal fan TV felt the same. Yeah, but if, I, if I'm being honest with this one, when I looked at this fixture, um, and it's quite sad to, to have this outlook on it for as good as Arsenal used to be, like you touched upon them. Um I looked at the fiction and I thought that's a routine three points for City because over the last five, six, seven years that's just what City have tended to do to Arsenal. You know, that they, they, they beat them quite comfortably and, and like you said, they didn't really get out of out of first gear that much and it was quite a comfortable victory in the end. Yeah, it was very comfortable. Um, that's Aguero's tenth Premier League hat trick. Um, the only man that has scored more Premier League hat Premier League hat tricks, you know what it is? Shearer. Shearer, he's got eleven. Yeah. Just wow, one really? more than Aguero. Yeah. I think he's got 14 in total as Aguero in all comps, I believe, for City, um, but 10 in the Premier League. Um, and Arsenal, well, another interesting stat that I came across was since the start of 2018, only two teams have lost more away Premier League games than Arsenal. Um, Arsenal have lost 12, yeah. and Brighton have lost 14, and Huddersfield have lost 13. Arsenal's away form under Wenger was... Um was pretty abysmal, yeah. and then under Emery, it's not sure. It picked up okay at the beginning of the season, but it's there was that little where run where now. they. Um, I, I still think they're more resolute than than before, but this Arsenal side, they're still missing certain ingredients to make them a very good side. They're not too far away, but there's certain mm. ingredients that they're just not there. And I'm I'm curious in the summer to see what happens because, as we said previously, Arsenal, you know, they could only get loan signings um, in the window. They almost got Perisic, which would have been a very good signing. Yeah. Very good player. Um, but they got Suarez. But again, um, it wouldn't be what they need, though. No, not not necessarily, no. Yeah. But it would be, be better than a Wobie in fairness. Yeah. Um, moving forward with Arsenal, the Rams lost in the Super Bowl last night. So Arsenal fans everywhere will fucking rejoice. They'll be loving that because Stan Kroenke... <laughs> poured all his money into that and again you're not a Super Bowl guy I'm not really a Super Bowl guy but if you thought Arsenal were bad on the weekend let me tell you watch the Rams in the Super Bowl because they were a fucking ass they were shit yeah, yeah they were the um, best no they were terrible but um, yeah Arsenal it's interesting to see what happens in the summer because this is a make or break summer now do you yeah. back Emery and give him what he needs or if you don't would yeah. you, you just have another season like this I think, you, I think you've got to back him um that's the only thing you can do because Arsenal, are, they, as they showed with Wenger, they're very patient. Um, that's, I think that's the only way they can go with it because the, I watched the performance on the weekend and they just looked to have no backbone. They didn't look difficult to beat. No. City weren't all that good and they just, just steamrolled them very easily. So um, a lot has to change still for Arsenal. Yeah, That away performance, um, just it, it didn't seem too dissimilar to um, when they've gone to the Etihad and the Wenger in the last two or three seasons. Mm. Um, it just looked like a very similar performance. But um, yeah, a, a lot does have to change with Arsenal, but I would give Emery another season, of course, 100%. Um, and give him a little bit of money to see how he gets on. Um, City obviously decent win for them 
Um, you know, we, I, good, I, I said it was routine, but you know, the Arsenal are still aside us in the top four, um, or, or were in the top four. So um, you have to, you know, still give a little bit of respect when you take a, a scalp like that. Mm-hmm. Um, City, though, um, 50% of the goals they've conceded this season um, in the league have come from set pieces. Yeah, that's the highest uh, ratio of any side in the league. So really? they've conceded 20 goals in the league, 10 of those come by set piece set pieces rather so um, if anything's going to be their downfall it's going to be that we, we've mentioned about their defence before yeah look defensively I don't think they're as good as, as people make out no. I really don't I mean Kyle Walker I'm not a massive fan of I like Laporte the more I see him actually I think he's a very good player interesting that they went with Fernandinho at centre half and yeah, Laporte at, left, at back. left back which shows Guardiola may have a few trust issues with the defenders that he's purchased um, they wouldn't be easy defenders to get rid of if he decided to get rid of some of them either because they're on such big wages and they command such big fees but um, like I said Juan Bissaka and Chilwell seem to be obvious targets um, Chilwell's name keeps coming up a lot so I'm of the opinion that Guardiola might go for him we'll see but I think he'd be a good addition to that Man City side especially yeah. if you can't get Mendy to, to play but um, yeah City defensively it could be their letdown reset it actually on previous podcasts and I, just a quick FYI a lot of people have been watching this going who is Reese? where is he <laughs> Reese is a guy who lives up north big into psychology in Newcastle uh, he's not here right now he comes he's, it's sporadic Reese comes every now and then when when he's allowed back home, for a bit like a Newcastle win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Reese comes every now and then. It's like yeah. you, you know, you, you'll see him maybe uh, during the holiday season, and, and that's about it. But yeah, so that's Reese. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, going back to what we were saying about Man City, um, defensively, um, as Reese pointed out in previous podcasts, especially in the later stages of the Champions League and the big games, that's when they tend to get exposed. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if that happens no, again. Th- but. You, know, you can flip it on his head and think positively if you're Guardiola. They're one or two good signings away from being a complete side. Yeah. Um, so come the summer now, if they can sign someone like a Chilwell or, or a Wan-Bissaka, maybe get another top quality centre-half in to play alongside Laporte then, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, then you've got Fernandinho Shield in that then. And then the array of attacking talent they have, they'd be pretty formidable then if they aren't already. So yeah, totally agree. Um, not too much missing there. No, there definitely isn't. All right, cool. We're going to a quick Euro roundup then. And uh, yeah, that'll be that. Yeah, question first for you, though. Oh, I do cool. have two questions. Yeah. Um, so we mentioned Wolves earlier, mm-hmm. um, you know, how well they're doing at the moment. Um, what I wanted to ask was um, so they currently sit in seventh place. Um, if that's where they stay yes. by the end of the season, should Nuno be a major contender, if not the winner of manager of the season? I've already said I think they should be potentially team of the season. Because so some of the football be manager play, of the season. I think he has to be up so there. So if Klopp wins the league? No, if Klopp wins the league, then it's going to Klopp. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I mean, if Guardiola wins the league, it's probably going to Guardiola as well. That's just how it is. That's mm-hmm. the, the nature of the beast. But um, Nuno has to be up there. He, yeah. Put it this way, he has to at least be nominated. He has, his name has to be in contention. And if you're given a team of the season, then for me, irrespective of who win the leagues, if Wolves finish, what, seventh? Yeah. Then it has to be Wolves. It has to be. He's definitely going to be in that conversation regardless. He needs he? to be in that conversation. Unless the wheels fall off now, which I can't see it. No, same. Um, then he has to be in that conversation. Um, the other question I wanted to ask was, if, if you're a betting man, which you know, to the regular listeners will know that you aren't. Fuck, fuck betting. Because uh, you, you were perhaps maybe a bit of a betting man in there. Back in the day, I used back to in like the day. a flutter, shall we say. But the stress is just too much. I can't handle it. Just can't, just can't call I can't, it. I can't yeah. do it. Um, so if you were a betting man, though, um, who would you say is more likely to lose their job before the end of the season? Is it Sari or Marco Silva? Oh, that's a fucking good question, that is. Uh, do you know what? I would say Sari. Yeah? Yeah, I think the expectations are much, much higher at Chelsea. And Abramovich has shown consistently um, that he doesn't fuck around when it comes to things like that. If by March you are not in the top four positions or challenging... It's just about to segue into that question. At what point in the season does it get... We're coming to that, up to it. To that point where March. You, you, it's no longer any value in sacking. middle of the March, end of March, Everton's expectations are, okay, we want to finish as high as possible, which is 7th. But mm-hmm. if they finish in 10th, they may look at it and go, ah, okay, right, you know, we'll, give, we'll, we'll give them another season. Yeah. We'll give them a bit more money. Sarri doesn't have that luxury. Yeah. If they are out to the top four, they're fifth or sixth, and they're not in any champ, they're not at least competing for the Europa League, Bram Bitch won't have Yeah, it. and I, I've said before in the previous episode that um, Abramovich um, has never kept a manager on for a second season that's failed to win a trophy in his first year so yeah. um, 
you know, if United knock Chelsea out, you know, it's a big if, obviously. It's at the bridge. If United knock them out of the FA Cup um, and they fall out of that top four, obviously we know they're not going to win the league. Um, and the Europa League maybe doesn't got a plan, then he could very well be on on his way out the exit. So um, I would say Sarri as well, because I think with, with Everton, they're not happy, but I think that they might just sort of draw a line and just look, this hasn't gone to plan, and we'll see what next season brings with a bit more money. Cool. Cool. Um, so I am going to go into the European roundup now. So passports um, ready, people. Yeah. Apologies. The last few episodes, you know, with the we haven't had a Euro roundup in a while, have we? Yeah. With the Euro break and like the congested fixture list, obviously it's just we've just yeah. we've just put it on the back burner, but it's back. Mm. And hopefully, it's I can't stay. wait for some of these pronunciations as well because I know mine are bad. But <laughs> okay. So um, starting with Real Madrid, yeah. uh, you know the youngster Vinicius Junior. Yeah. Um, scored a very good goal and he produced. If, well, I would say a, a scintillating he's display. A real, he's a terrific. Yeah. We we mentioned him on previous podcasts. Him, uh, Arthur Melo is another one at Barcelona. Mm-hmm. The Brazil have got a very healthy future, yeah, as they always have mm-hmm. done, you know. Um, but the future looks bright for them, as you said. They do indeed. Um, so Ma- Madrid are going about their business quietly at the moment, but they they they're on a little bit of a run, you know. They're they're picking up some decent points. Mm. Um, Barcelona and Atletico Madrid both drop points um, this weekend. Um, so they moved within two points of Atletico in second. I think it's seven or eight uh, within Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Um, Messi scored a brace um, as they came back from two down. I think it was against Valencia, I believe it was. Yeah. And Alvaro, 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 Alvaro. there it was. It's going so well. No, going so well. It's going um, so good. Alvaro Morata um, made his Atletico Madrid debut. Um, obviously, he went on loan um, from Chelsea. And um, the match ended in their first defeat in 19 games. Morata comes across as such a scumbag in Spain now. You know, going from uh, from Madrid to Atletico. Yeah. Neither set of fans really like him now. No. I don't think it was that great a move for him, just, to be honest with you. Well, he just has no luck. No luck at all. And, you know, some bits maybe not down to luck, but he's gone there, Atletico Madrid, on a good run. And he had four chances on goal, all off target, I add. Um and they're going to lose their first game in 19. So he can't do he can't do all right. Not surprised. So maybe not a smart move by Atletico, but mm-hmm. you know, law of averages says that something's going to happen for him sooner or later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they also drop points as well. Um, PSG suffered a first league defeat um, this season, going down 2-1 away at Lyon. But they still remain 10 points clear with two games in hand. Which tells you everything you need to know about that league. Yeah. Um, so that will put them maybe 16 points clear. Um, even have to lose into Lee on this weekend. That's crazy. Um, Juventus also dropped points this season. They surrendered a 3 1 defeat at home to Parma. Ronaldo had a brace, but so did former Arsenal player Jovino. Was, uh, was there to save the day for Jovino. Parma? Jovino. As in Ivory Coast Jovino. Oh, yes. Fuck, he's still As playing. In the only realize. Jovino. He spoiled the party for, for you because they don't drop many points. They've no, only he drawn one know. game this season. Um, but that's now a second. So, yeah, he struck twice in the second half to uh, to upset uh, Juve a little bit. But I think they still maybe think it's eight or nine points clear as well. Yeah, so, healthy league, lead yeah. there for them as well. And just briefly over to the Bundesliga. Bayern lost 3-1 away to Leverkusen, um, which drops them down to third, actually. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach have uh, leaped up into second. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting times. Uh, with no games in hand or anything like that. It's all square. And uh, Dortmund... Didn't win, but they drew, so they gained another point on Bayern. So that's um, their six-point lead's gone to seven. So I think it's set. They were. It's all going on. I think it's seven titles that they've won in a row by Munich. Or they had six, and they were bidding for a seventh. But um, you know that looks to be they're, they're chasing a bit of a lost cause there at the moment. So they are, yeah. points dropped by a lot of the big sides. Interesting this times, people. Interesting mm-hmm. times. All right, cool. We we'll wrap it up. Remember, SoundCloud. The links are going to be on our Twitter page. Follow the Twitter page and IG page at BNB Podcast. If you're a, an iTunes person, look for Victory and Vices Podcast. We're going to be on there. You can download, subscribe, get it straight to your phone. Um, again, if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, feel free to do so. All our old content is on there. And we've got plenty of new content coming as well over the next few weeks and months. Um, anything else you want to add? No, no, I think that's everything. Yeah. All right, Coming cool. On. That's a wrap. So, till next time, people, take care. Ciao.